Location. <clears throat> Got it. All right. According to this, we are now live. What is up, everyone? Happy Monday. It is November, and we are, as always, here on another Monday night to bring you another iteration, another edition of our stay-at-home open mic presented by the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series based out of El Paso, Texas. And um, if you didn't notice, I'm back in the green screen room just because I love graphics to point to. Uh, <laughs> even though I liked from the living room with the pool table and all that, um, this is cool because I can be like, stay at home, open mic. You can check out my name right there, right? Sometimes you got to like reorient yourself in Zoom pointing mode though, right? Um, and so my name is Richie Madrufo. I am the project director of this thing. We are based out of El Paso, Texas and part of Border Senses, a nonprofit literary organization that's intended to support the literary arts and literacy in our region. Uh, when we have several different projects, including writing workshops, publications, a podcast, and of course, this open mic. Uh, in addition to being online, we have resumed uh, for the time being, as long as it's safe to do so, uh, in-person shows, and we have quite a few of them. Uh, I don't have a fancy PowerPoint this week. I didn't get to update it, but uh, we're going to be at Old Cheap Dog Brewery on Thursday, the 18th, featuring Johnny Rivers. This guy is dope. He's currently been in San Antonio, and he was one of the last El Paso poets to, like, to me, make it really, really far in, like, individual world poetry slam contest. I think he got all the way up to 13th uh, in terms of rankings the year he went on to represent. Um, so it's, he's a good friend. He's going to be back in town and performing. We're also going to be doing a fundraiser for another organization I'm involved with called Papagayo. Um, I, I do teach uh, English at our local community college. It's a whole lot of fun. I love it. I love getting to teach writing, especially when I get to get a little more, a little more creative with it. Um, Papagayo is is part of the of the of the college, and we invite students to do, to take part in that. And so we are actually starting an international student scholarship. A lot of our students do travel from from Juarez, Mexico, and come and study here in the U.S. And so. Um, sometimes travel is, is hard and, and paying for books, tuition. So we're going to do, we're trying to put together a little scholarship for some of our students. Um, so Thursday, we're going to have a, a fundraiser there. And if you can attend, uh, there are links you can use to, to donate. <clears throat> uh, but you know what, with that, all that said and done, uh, follow us online, you know, barbed wire open mic. If you just type that in, we will show up. Um, <clears throat> Khan was supposed to host tonight, but she, unfortunately she couldn't make it. So I'm sending love her way. Um, she is amazing, you know, we all know her as the dynamo she is and and bring her bring people together. Uh, with that said, yo, we got a great list tonight. If you're not familiar, this is like any other open mic. We're going to invite people up to do their thing via Zoom. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you guys are the audience, right? So we want you clapping. We want you cheering. Use those fire emojis. Use those tear emojis when appropriate. You know, if you feel something, let the poet know, right? Put something in the comments. We do have a live chat. Uh, and of course, everyone who comes up to perform, I am going to have you guys share social media, links to books. I know so many of you guys have books out now, which is amazing. Think about from a year ago, you have so many more people that have been published in that time. And it just speaks so much to how important these spaces have been you know all these spaces where we're we're meeting up and getting to talk and, and networking sorry i hit my my mic because i talk with my hands all right anyway uh, i'm gonna you know limit myself and my talking i'm gonna try and make not make this into a podcast like i do sometimes so we're just gonna go ahead and get into it i'm gonna try and introduce everyone as best as i can let them know where they're from and uh we're gonna kick things off uh at the <laughs> Of all, the first time ever, the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale. Um, yo, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, I'm surprised you even, like, you should be resting. But, yo, you want to share some stuff with us. You're part, so sending love your way. We have Kemlin in the house. Going to take it away. What's up, Kemlin? Hi, everyone. You know, El Paso, you are my peeps. You know that you guys are my first live. Uh, you guys are mine. And so I can't wait to, I can't get to come back and travel to El Paso again. But right now, I can't even fucking stand up on my feet. So, hence I'm here reporting from Mayo Clinic and Scottsdale and hoping that uh, the doctors here will help me out so that we can totally like be back in life with each other. So, uh, while I'm here, I tell everyone I'm actually at a writer's retreat. 
And so I've been writing uh, poems. And uh, my companion is The World According to Miss Rebrazier by uh, Desmond Kong Jachalita, one of my favorite authors from Singapore. So I'll be reading poems that I've been, resp uh, been creating uh, using this book. So the first poem I'm reading to you is called A Sad Day When Even the Cat Feels Sorry for You. Your downfall was loving, believing it was mutual. Sweetie, I never, I'll never, i never leave you. You are a victim of an ancient shell game. I nip at your ankles. Wake up from anesthesia. You find no pleasure. You refuse to be roused. I walk across your keyboard, hoping you'd notice me. I do this for your benefit. Get out of your head. Damn it. Live again, open the dam to your eyes and let those tears fall. It's bad when the kitty has to like deal with your sadness. Okay, second poem is about, write about a tree that you met when you were a child. So this is called Mother Tree. I love you, Mother Frangipani. I rest in your shade of waxy leaves. I climb up the lap of knobbly branches. Your pink blossoms crown me princess. Perfume prettily, giddy, ready for a ball. I fell asleep cradled between your roots. I lingered with you until sunset, clinging closely to your sturdy trunk. Tell me you love me and will never leave. Let me stay with you forever. Monsters wait in ambush for me. Let me pretend you'll keep me safe. No one really wants me. Can I, can you accept me as your girl? That's Mother Tree. And then here is, oh gosh, uh, Ghost. I'm supposed to write an epistle starting with Dear Father. So this is called Ghost. Dear Father, Son, Holy Ghost, why did you ghost me? Me all alone that night, nightmare when he was angry, anger, rage overtook him. He who knew my wounds and pain, pain was what he dealt. I felt feeling his shaft up my ass, asking, oh God, why God, why did that man I thought I knew knew how to and did destroy destruction heap on destruction what i needed was reconstruction construct inscribe hope for life life sentence of hell hell no not gonna allow allowance to let him go scot free freedom he enjoys when i have none no one can help me be whole whole in my heart i still fight frightened i will no longer long to return to an age of innocence in a sense i just sense nothing, num numbers of women, children, and men mention to me they've suffered, suffering under the power, powder keg about to ignite ignition with a key in it, spit the truth, diffuse the bomb, bombardment of the mind, mindful there's a way, wayward child, look for breadcrumbs home, help me father, or will you keep ghosting me? Wow. All right. Kimlin, guys, feel free to yes. make yourselves show. Wow. Guys. Incredible. Dynamite. Dynamite. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh. That was amazing. Yeah. I know you can't stand right now, but you're blowing everyone off their so Thank you so you much. You unleashed a yes. nuclear bomb. Beautiful. You unleashed a nuclear every, bomb. I hope everyone in your as well as yourself. All right. There's clearly a lot of love your way. Um, Kemlin, you know, enjoy the rest of your writer's retreat, you know. Yeah, and, writer's uh, retreat, man. Healthy and, 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 and with more, more power and knowledge behind you, you know. Um, do you have anything you'd like to, you know, promote? You oh, yeah. So tomorrow. I, I, I want to invite you guys tomorrow morning. I debut my, uh, my show. It's a it's called Between the Lines with Kemlin Tan Bappi. It's with uh, the Poetry Global Network. I want to invite you. It's super early, okay? So, I mean, I know it's super early. It's 5 a.m. Uh, Arizona time, 7, uh, uh, and it's, you know, it's it's early, guys. But I created it because I, I wanted to give back a little bit to those in Asia and Oceania 
who they don't guys they don't have an english speaking open mic during the week we are so blessed in the us that every night we have you know options to go to open mics but they don't over there so anyway uh you know i i will put the sign up uh list and link in the uh in the chat so you can come join me my co-host is my brother lucian tan or poet spit and uh he's going to be backing me up but it's going to be like a poetry reading space it's not necessarily like a traditional open mic because a lot of my friends are super shy they're page poets and they've never really uh, read aloud so i'm trying to encourage them to you know to read and get stronger and feel more comfortable in the open mic but i would love for you guys to join me because you guys are freaking awesome and will bring your energy and just be such super great models for my friends in asia okay so i'll put that in the chat but you know come join me i'll still be looking like this because i have to uh, get my eeg done and uh, all that jazz love you Yes, right on. Yes, yes, we love you Woo! too. So, thank you, Kemlin. Check that out. Um, the link. I'm gonna try really, really harder this time to to share links from the Zoom chat into the YouTube chat. So if people want to share that, uh, unless you want to keep it private, let me know. Like you guys, like you can just mention it in the Zoom chat. Uh, thank you, Kemlin, for kicking it off. Um, yeah, that's dedication. You know, I, I, I saw earlier you were you were in in for a session. <laughs> I'm like, and you still signed up. So. Uh, here we are. Okay, so we're going to keep it going. We're going to go from the PHX to NYC. We have uh, the Beanie God up next. We have Deadpan Lizzie. What is up? Just in time. Beanie season. I feel it coming. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing okay. Cameron, I hope you feel better soon. Um, what's the weather like in uh, El Paso right now? It's pretty chill. It's like 50s, 70s. Kind of gets a little colder yeah. at night. I mean, that may be the beanie guy, but it's freaking cold here in New York City. <laughs> but uh, anyway, all right, I'm going to read uh, two new pieces tonight. First one is uh, dedicated to Frida Kahlo. It's called Cancer Sons. She, too, was a cancer guided by the sun, reflective in her paintings, words, persona, sensitivity, every hue, consonant, vowel, more influ influential than the next, a loyal soul unafraid to express herself. Confidently sporting a no fucks left to give attitude, her presence shines strongly when the stars dance throughout the night sky. I will make my pilgrimage to Mexico for her one day to pay my respects in person, but always in my heart. And then final piece is called uh, Vitamin K. Never a miracle to be kind. What should we what we should expect from each other day in and day out? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Toxic energy goes hand in hand with sour stomachs. No fun unless you enjoy the runs. Practice kindness religiously. Vitamin K for our souls. Thank you. Right on. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Dead pen. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what does the K stand for? Kindness. Kindness, oh, practice okay, kindness. Vitamin, vitamin K, we kindness. That was the, we were never the, the real Our special K. I made, I made it, yeah. I, I made it up. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Do you have a TV on? Oh, no, yeah. I I I oh, I'm sorry. On. Yes, Abe's got the, 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 the oh, TV on. Okay. Um, yo, thank you. Do you have anything you'd like to promote or at least plug your social media for people tuning in uh, and catching? If you want to learn more about me or read over uh, 10,000 poems, you can go to ElizabethSophiaStrauss.com and I will drop you in the chat. Thank you so much. <clears throat> All right. And as always, thank you. I saw you got to be part of the 2-1 event that I knew you did with Paris. That is amazing. Um, I love to see all the innovation going on and happening and that that all you guys get to be part of that. I love it. Um, all right. We're going to stick around in New York City for our next performer. He's been coming through. It's always great to have him. Ray did this. He's ready to do something. Let's go ahead and welcome Ray to the stage. What's up, man? Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, blessings to you all, Kemlin. I send you my love and healing energies. You will get through this. Um, shout out to Paul. Con Queso and Peggy Robles. Uh, I wrote this beautiful poem today in their workshop on divine masculinity and femininity. Uh, trigger warning for depictions of sexual violence. 
It's called Saved a Prayer. Today, I saved a prayer. I wanted to spend it on God, but the words were stuck in my throat like a scream. My knees still bleed from the power of Christianity. I was born of sin, and no matter how much I prayed, God never took away the gay. That black hole left eating away, and my infinities had me believe that my sexualities, my body would wrap around his body. Another Bigfoot sighting, that homosexuality goes hand in hand with man and man and sin is man and I wanted man more than I wanted life. I wanted to ask God why I was born man and not grown into a woman. I wanted to ask God why it was so easy for us to forget that children hold on to secrets tighter than Christians hold on to the Holy Cross. Why prayers ain't cheap and my pockets only go so deep. How can I be forgiving of my homosexuality? How many more prayers do I need to pay for these memories to go away, oh Lord. I wanted to pray that I would wake up one day no longer having to be gay, oh Lord. I spent my last prayer on the day my father tried to cure my gay with his fists. I deserved it, oh Lord, our father. He told me I deserved it, who art in heaven when he squeezed his way in between my legs. Hallowed be thy name, slow and steady, no condom on. Thy kingdom come faster and harder, no Lubrication, thy will be done. I wanted to scream, but I couldn't breathe on earth as it is in heaven. Penetration without permission. Give us a daily bread. His skin smelled like wine and forgive us for our trespasses. It only happens at night as we forgive those who trespass against us. Our bodies became one and led us not into temptation. How many more prayers do I need to pay and deliver us from this evil for these memories to go away? For thine is the kingdom. I was only eight and the power and the glory i call that man my father forever and ever i will remember amen Woo! thank you damn oh man dope 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 <laughs> amazing you got lots of love right now in the chat going on for you Can we lose our um, mind for right now i just want to make sure that i can please. scream appropriately I, that was yeah. amazing yeah, holy, shit. Did holy that. shit right you fucking did that, you fucking did did that. all that all yeah. that the so prayers like, so like, so can we lose our mind now the you prayers. are so God. brave, so brave. Wow. Yeah. I you. Permission to go crazy. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank Yo, you. Shout out, man. Did, did you have another hey, one? Or that was the best Ray piece that I've done. That was a great Ray man. piece. Ray man, did that. that. All right, that Ray did like, this. Thank you. <laughs> Sweet man. man. Um, did you have any anything else, or did you at least want to plug uh, a project, upcoming feature, or your social media? Um, well, you can follow me at Ray did this. That's all. Thank you. No, oh, man. Thank you for bringing that that power and force to us. Thank you so much, man. Um, yeah. As always, guys, show lots of love in the chat. We always appreciate it. Shout out to YouTube. Everyone who's watching right now, love you guys. Or if you're tuning in later, awesome, awesome. Make sure to let us know. Say hi. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, let's keep going. So that was New York City. Once again, we're actually going to go up to Massachusetts. That's where our next performer is for now, as they like to say. And they have a book out. They have a book coming out. Yes. Let's go ahead and welcome Gigi up to the mic. What is up, Gigi? Welcome back. Hello. How are you? I'm um, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. So I have a few things to promote. I have um, a book coming out. Uh, it should be here shortly. And uh, thanks to the wonderful Tori, I'm going to uh, release um, a Google Doc, like a Google form where you can do pre-orders soon. I just want to have like the books like in my living room before I start shipping stuff out because I have ADHD and I know myself. So information for that will be soon. You can follow me at iron underscore resilience. Um, I also have a website that I'll be updating this week, uh, uh, Arcadian dash poetry. And I also am featuring at um, the word is right has a wonderful um a wonderful slam uh, this weekend. So I'll be doing that on Saturday and I can plug in the information for that. All right. I got, I guess I'll just jump into it now since I've 
uh, talked for what seems like forever. I have three poems. I hope that that's okay. I haven't read in like a really long time and I've been traveling over God knows where. So let's get into it. So this is all new shit, by the way, because I can finally write again since the book is done. Um, and I'll read the one that is about my book first. And this one's called Debut. Also, sorry, Marissa, if you're seeing this. <laughs> to the book I put off, it's now bound in print. Your death, your life, the illness that lingered for months and the deterioration of a strong man to what withered thinner than the pages of my book. I apologize to my editor for passing due dates. So many due dates. I was afraid if I put it into print, it would be official. More official than your epitaph. More official than the dirt from digging your grave and the grass that now grows on top of it. And it's now in print and now it's tangible and you can grasp it. My grief, my story, the empty dining room table and the scuff marks that the hospice bed made on the floor by anyone who wants to put their hands through it. I wonder when you read it, can you smell cancer that lingered in my living room? Will they ever know the echoes and the creaking of my house? That as much as I wanted to publish a book, so part, uh, so a part of him could never die. Ironically enough, solidified in words, I have casted forever is his death. I debut a new book, and I missed so many deadlines because as much as I wanted the book uh, to be real, it's a manuscript and the solidness of his death. Now my grief no longer belongs just to me, and now he no longer belongs just to me. And then. This next one is called Grandmother's Hands. I sit in a crowded nail salon and I wonder why my nails are so sharp, always so sharp. Why do I make it so hard to hold my hand, to hold me? Maybe I'll try something smoother in hopes my hand is soft to hold, easier to cling to, harder to let go. So I ask for long oval shaped nails and I look down at them and I remembered why I never picked this shape. I now have my grandmother's hands bearing her long oval nails and even wearing so many rings like she once did. I realize I have so much of my grandmother in me. I wonder if that's why I make my hands so hard to hold because I have the hands of a woman who never used her hands to love the right people, raised them at her children and held the hands with a man, held his face, held their lives together, fingers entwined when she knew what he did to their children at night. The quiet hours of a house that still creaks. I hope I learn to love with these hands. I hope I learn to love with these hands. I wonder, if I like my sharp nails because I want it to be hard to hold me because I know what these hands are capable of being such petite weapons. And then I have just one more and then I'll leave for the night. <laughs> uh, this one's a poly, this one's a poly poem uh, for a little background. If you guys don't know what that is, uh, it's about just, you know, when you're not someone's nesting partner. So if you don't know what those terms are, um, Go look it up and be some fun literature for tonight. Marriage in your future husband's bed. Also, if you hear running, I have cats running around. Sorry. Our bodies pull apart. Monogamy seems stitched deeper than muscles as we lay in a bed you and your future husband will lay in. As he texts the both of us to have a good night, tell your girlfriend I said hi. He says, I look up at the red lit room. I feel our sweat. I feel as if I'm in a black room. I am motionless. I am a photo in the negative space, a simple moment to be captured as I wait in the darkness, the negative of a photo that has yet to be hung. Hang me as I drip off the dark parts of myself as I develop into a lover, not bound to one body, not bound to one place, but also one that is never clutched onto. This place is mine just as much as it is his. And I know that you'll never be my wife, but in this bed, I will claim you as mine. This marriage to one another is deep, much deeper than skin as we pretend we are each other's every waking breath. Now breathless, the lights will eventually turn on. 
when we have a marriage in a bed, you will sleep with your future husband in. And I wonder if I'll ever be first, ever be the nest to call home for someone. I wonder if I'll ever have a marriage bound thicker than between sheets. I wonder if they know that there are moments I feel like I'll never, that I've never left the red lit room and I'm still a photo in the negative space as if I were a mere moment to capture. And I wonder if I'll ever be more than a moment. Thank you. Yes, awesome. Thank you so much, Gigi. Uh, yeah, yeah, show some love, guys. <laughs> Yo, Nick, I love that noise. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, you're probably possible breakage. <laughs> I can't replicate it, but it was amazing. Lots of love in that noise, right? <laughs> It was like a, a siren of, oh, a resilient, a siren, huh? Dig it, dig it, dig it. Um, yo, so thank you. Going to stay updated on the website, being uh, track status of your book. Of course, guys, please plug your books. It is the holiday season is coming up, and the best thing you can do is support people by buying their art, their books, and uh, buy one for yourself and buy some for friends who you, you know would love it. You know, I think uh, that's that's a perfect gift. Uh, amazing. Thank you for joining us, uh, Massachusetts, for now. I know Didi likes doing some traveling and, and you want to do some before grad school and all that. So uh, speaking of, of traveling, we're going to continue to travel uh, all throughout the show. Again, shout out to everyone watching on YouTube. Thank you guys for listening. Um, all right. So next up, <clears throat> uh, we're going to go... We're going to come to El Paso. That's our home turf. A lot of you guys got to experience that uh, just recently when you when you came and traveled by. And uh, you guys, anyone watching and listening right now, you guys are always welcome to El Paso. Hit me up. Hit up the Barbed Wire Open Mic, and we'll put together a show for you, a reading, what, you know, something, a, a place to sell your books, give you, show you some cool spots. But for now, let's go ahead and welcome one of our awesome uh, poets. She is the, the Poet Laureate of Tumble Words. Many of you guys are familiar with Tumble Words, an amazing place to get your, your writing done Saturdays from 1 to 3 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, we have Robin Schofield next up. What is, what's up, Robin? Welcome back. Hey, guys. It's good to be here, as always. Love hearing everybody's stuff. And I'm going to do something a little different today. Um, I got an autobiographical poem here, a couple of them. So this is called Portrait of the Artist as a Young Child. She kept the lamp on late, floral notebook on her desk, and the sins of the she-wolf, fraud and betrayal. Her mother chased her, red devils in her nightmares. Trailing clouds of glory, at seven, she wrote her first poems about Robbins. What do you want to be when you grow up? Her aunt, the artist, asked. A poet, she said. Her mother sang loudly and off key, neither picked up a pen nor sat at a typewriter. The New Yorker lay about on the coffee table. They feed, they lion. When she boiled over among autumnal colors, her mother didn't believe her. She said, red and orange rhyme. You mean they match? No, she heard them rhyming in the lantana by the pigeon coop. She learned to name purple martins and dianthus. Portulaca and Mockingbird, where the ruby-throated hummingbird oscillated around the Turk's cup and mixed up the tenses in her poems. No one taught her any better. That was the riddle. Her mother never learned the names of any flowers except those for the dead, marigolds, and the hackberry tree, which flowers white in spring and then Turns out red berries by autumn. And then uh, this one is another kind of uh, from a different era, another autobiographical poem. It's called Enlightenment Blues. Lob Song, the Tibetan monk, says, Live in the now. It's nirvana, a candle going out. My mother at 88 does live in the now, but far from enlightenment, impatient that no time passes. Physicists mark up equations for time. 
that move backward and forward, but the arrow only goes one way, as we can see for ourselves. Never does the broken cup rearrange itself and jump back on the table. My mother doesn't retain her arrow of time. She confabulates the yesterday she cannot remember. She remembers to drink the scotch and to cheat on the crosswords. Her addictions have the sense of history that she presently lacks. When I meditate to an ancient dialect, I feel time disappear for 20 minutes. Her life has tumbled together until she thinks she is 40 again and able to walk. She crumples to the ground and curses at the EMS who come to pick her up. Practice, practice meditation until the monkey mind stops chattering. What persists of her self besides swearing? Not the woman advertising executive in the 1950s, not the boozing, threatening mother of the 1960s, not the brassy haired woman proud to shop at Neiman's. Not this, not that, said the Buddha. She calls the knell of the clock over and over, ringing out like a tower. She has a flash now and then that her children don't love her as they love their father. Live in the now, lose yourself, says the enlightenment coach. Ah, but she never loses herself in the present. It's clear that's key. My doctor and I speculate on, on her disorder. Narcissistic with venom, I suggest. He smiles and says it's bipolar too. Like me. Physicists say space-time may spread so thin in the old universe that it will dissipate entirely unless dark matter pulls it together after there's nothing left in imagination of you and yours, not even ashes. That's it. That's a couple of uh, poems from my nice. to be book, Ridge of High Pressure. That's that was awesome. Really, that was really I'm cool. looking forward to it. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome, Robin. Is there anything you'd like to promote right now? Any links or things coming up? Well, I'm on Facebook with a couple of pages for different books. And um, I have two books. I have Sunflower Cantos out from Mouthfeel Press. And I have Flow, which uh, Gene Keller and I put together. It's from Street of Trees Project. And Flow won a little prize from the Regional Border Library Association. And um, that's that's what I got. All right. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. And those are excellent books. You know, I always mention that when I have an opportunity to do so. Um, yeah, definitely hit up both of them. Um, and some of you guys heard the name. Some of you guys got to meet Gene Keller when we had our, our, our show last month at Through the Looking Glass. He's currently working on his, his new album at Star City Studio. Uh, speaking of Through the Looking Glass, we're going to have our next big poetry event this Saturday, the 20th, there. Uh, come check it out. It is all based around the artwork of Yasmin. Uh, her artist name is Sochi Uh And we do have a, a website link. I need to get that. I'm going to post it in the chat because even though we're going to do a live reading, I'm encouraging people to write something based off of the, the artwork. It's going to be ecrastic writing. Uh, it's also open to songwriters. So if you guys want to share that. Oh, thank you so much, Lee. I already got, I already got down. Awesome. Thank you. That's why you're the MV Lee. <laughs> getting down with the links um check it out it's called memeja um you know and it's gonna be art and music inspired by the art of sochi uh would love you guys to to write something and we'll take video submissions i'm gonna update the website so people can submit videos and we'll probably play it at the event or at least put it online so people can check out um all right let's keep going though thank you so much robin we're gonna go from el paso to brazil uh one time when i was chilling in london i got confused for brazilian i'm not really sure why but uh you know i it's a it's a place i would love to visit and so uh our next performer wrote down they're gonna share some poetry maybe dense let's find out let's go and walk on poetic spit 
to the mic. What is up, man? Good to have you back. Uh, you're not in Maine today. <laughs> no, I'm not. And uh, I'm just going to do a trio of uh, fresh work for you guys, if that's okay. This first one writes of what Robin did. Uh, it's called, How Old Am I? Gaze into her eyes, framed with lines etched from numerous belly laughs. Furrows forged over years of enduring onerous burdens. She gazes past the horizon to a jitterbug with gentlemen in top hats and patent shoes, twirling her frilly dress, hands gloved daintily brushing the arm of another love-struck bow. Stabbing pain teleports her back to the prison of her once-lived body, adorned with swing, worshipped with lusty caresses, sordid kisses. She doubles over, yielding to cruel pain. She summons her family, shuffling reverently into the minuscule cathedral of her room, distracted by the canopy of machines, chirping like sentinels with robotic metronome. Let me go, please, she implores once again. Tear-stained faces struggle to release tension, broken by a question from an innocent. How old are you, Granny? How old am I? Her frail voice stammers and drifts into contemplation. Then a smile ignites on her weary face. She inclines her head and declares, I am as old as my last memory. This next one is called, Why I Don't Have an Accent. When people discover that I am from Singapore, they are often surprised that I don't have an accent. I do. What I think they mean is that I don't sound something like that. Here's why. We are Chinese, if you please. So like, <laughs> where you're from, China? Actually, no, I'm from Singapore. Whatever, same thing. Oh my God, are you even speaking English? Naive child, you didn't even know that was a racial slur. So preoccupied with crafting your accent to assimilate, only to be bludgeoned by bigots. Oh, you're Asian. So you're good at math, right? Yes, I am. Calculus, I can integrate and differentiate. But not the real smiles from the fake. Wow, you must be so smart. Um, I guess I enrolled in university at 16, but then spent the next 10 years trying to find myself. Is it true? about y'all having tiny wang chungs. <laughs> no la, I show you mine. Tonight can. Oh, I'll pass. I can have tiny anytime. But, but I'm actually quite hung. See, I'm pranakan. Oh my God, yo dude, you're Singaporean, like for real? Cause you have like no accent. Thanks. I've worked really hard to kill it. You killed it. <laughs> this last one's called Take a Deep Breath. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. <sighs> Warm breath cascading over skin, prickling with awkward excitement, shiver. Warm perfume, floral shampoo, stale cigarette. I scan fingers and true, taking wild flesh. Lips hugging eyebrow, nose, chin. Skipping down arched neck as mouth complains. Silenced as a wet tongue swabs hot nipple. Inhale, exhale. 
teeth tease, mouth devours, succulent lobe gasp as pursed lips pinch, savor salty, sweet beads of nectar. Fingers reaching to dip inside slippery petals, legs scissor impatiently, curled fingertips twist and push through warm wet folds, riffling swollen striations in the hallowed loft. Convulsing flesh electrified by jolts of deliv by delirious pleasure, patient pinky loitering slurped into cave of wonder. Inhale, exhale. Flesh churned like squelching jello, tremolo, lo tremolo moans slashed by possessed yowls, lust flowing between legs, drenching pulled sheets, potent scent of tuna, thrashing, shrieking climax, followed the crocodile death roll to continue beckoning mayhem with my fingers as we roll plop off the bed. Spell broken, rush to hydrate, Inhale, exhale, time to go again. Permission to freak out. Yeah, man. Go for it. You guys freak out. Make some noise. Amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. oh, woo. <laughs> that was really great. Great stuff, man. Thank you. Thank you, Lucian. I'm super happy that you've been coming out and joining us, uh, <laughs> regardless of where you are in the world. <laughs> um, do you have anything that you'd like to promote right now? Or I know you got your social media, right? Yeah, uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Poetic Spit. And I am very proud to be co-hosting with Kemlin Bappy tomorrow at the Between the Lines session. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Super early. You know, if you're a super, super duper night owl or if you're like a super early bird uh, here in the U.S., hit that up. That sounds amazing. Um, I think I missed the link last time. I don't know if you guys want to share share that um, So, because I didn't see it um, or I missed it. I missed it. So anyway, yo, thanks for coming through. Um, yes, I'm super happy to have you guys all joining us again. A lot of New peeps always joining us, and a kid always says, you know, the only thing better than a first-time reader is a second-time reader, someone who's returned. Um, all right, so uh, let's go and keep going. <laughs> I'm looking at the list here, and I see Ishka Bibble is up next, uh, who wrote, and I, I got a little nervous when I read the location, uh, a still in either Poland or Hungary, depending on Shuttle. who holds the borderland, a still? Um, but then I see it's you. All right. So, uh, yes. what's up? Yeah. So my, uh, that is my mother's side of the family was used to, my mother said that her great grandparent, that her grandparents used to argue over which country they were actually in when they were pogromed out of, uh, you know, and came over here during pogrom because there were so many border skirmishes that they never knew whether they were Hungarian or Polish. Uh, so, but anyways, um, so um, the first piece um, was just influenced by somebody here named Robin Schofield, and it's called Forging for Picnic Ingredients in Miss Schofield's Childhood Garden. The pretty portrolog, the pretty portrolaca are edible. The elegant tiny roses have no flavor. The succulent stems and leaves taste like cucumber. They are hidden, they hide their beauty in sandwiches. They make a salad look fancy and expensive. Thank you, Robin, for that beautiful poem that you did. Um, and then I'm gonna do a piece that I wrote in Finn Bell's wonderful um, Saturday workshop for Tumble Words. And the assignment was to uh, do an elegy or a eulogy for something that is right in front of you. So I did it for a grape. The little sapphire grape was delicious. It was sweet with a slight edge of whininess. Its prettiness preceded it. Its sleek and lanky physique was longer and skinnier than most grapes. Other varieties of grapes accused it of perpetuating unrealistic standards of beauty. Its purple, almost black skin felt jewel-like, but grapes 
are a product of farmers who choose to plant them. This grape might have been delicious in a jelly, smashed by toes into wine, roasted to accompany a zatar rubbed grilled lamb chop, or as ice cubes or a signature cocktail at a celebrity chef restaurant. Instead, it came to its demise by, by virtue of my teeth, pleasure in my sweet tooth. Of course, I was able to make sure it wasn't alone and devoured at least a dozen of its closest friends. Then I wanna do a piece that I did on Tuesday, this past Tuesday. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, you're you're in a you're in a poetry reading. Someone's reading through their poetry, and just their energy and their passion just triggers you to start writing poetry. And uh, that happened this past Tuesday during someone's uh, really wonderful um, feature. It's called um, "Why Poets Can't Be Responsible for Errant Behavior of Poetry." If you want me to hand you my heart, when I release my thoughts as words into the ether as poetry, I will never intentionally allow that. If you want to collect my tears with your eyes and ears so you can possess pieces of my soul I have said goodbye to, I will warn you there is a reason I have let them have their independence. My tears will deem your invitation as squatter's rights to become a permanent resident resident of your psyche. I readily give you the water rights to my poetry as if you can capture my torrents of emotion like rainfall or your drought-ridden garden. But beware its sacking salinity. Beware its ability to drown your emotions. My tears sometimes try to cling to my cheeks. They constantly sneak their way to my lips when I neglect to wipe them away. They insist on introducing salt into my diet when all I want is pepper. They refuse to admit that swallowing tears unequivocally causes high blood pressure. I think I have a little more here. So uh, I, I wrote this the other day when I woke up, didn't get back to sleep, which happens quite a bit to me. I am awake at 3.26 a.m. I woke to take a whiz, but my body didn't let me go back to sleep. Sometimes it, it might sometimes sometime after 7 a.m. when it will offer a wave of tiredness that leaves me no other option than to return to bed. I don't understand why it chooses to punish me this way. It would be a whole lot better off if it let me get my seven to eight hours straight, but it has decided to only allow me to sleep in two sessions several hours apart. This doesn't happen daily, only after I don't have to deal with side effects of doctor prescribed chemical pills. So interrupted sleep becomes a side effect of no side effects. Unfortunately, sleeping medications, both chemical and naturopathic cause severe headaches. Nighty night, or should I say morning. And here's just another piece that I wrote recently. When we first met, you were wearing rose colored contact lenses. You told me they filtered out the darkness that hovered over the world. You only took them out when you went to bed so your dreams weren't muted. When I explained how the sun shines through clouds on overcast days to cause sunburn, you scoffed at my science. But when you decided to not wear your contacts, you learned why museums only use daylight bulbs so to not yellow the color of art with soft white light. Then you explained to me since you were only bearing witness to true callers now, who realized certain people in your life weren't what they seemed. I understood and took it as a compliment. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes, Generalissimo. Uh, uh, SMO. Generalissimo. For people who are tuning in on YouTube, maybe seeing you for the first time, it's Generalissimo and you have a book out. What else can you tell our, our friends seeing you for the first time? Yes, everything I think is on my mind, which, uh, so yeah, everything I think is on my mind. It has been printed. I'm waiting to, just like Gigi, I'm waiting to have them arrive at my house before I can start selling them to people. Tomorrow I am 
featuring for Dane Entz at Time to Arrive. On Thursday afternoon, well, it's, it's Thursday afternoon. Um, I had the times wrong before. It's Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And then it's 3 p.m. Pacific time. I'm doing vocabulary poetry games. It's going to be called A Succession of Haiku and Tanta. I'm just going to throw out prompts left and right. And everyone gets five minutes to write as much as they want to each time. And depending on how many people show up is, you know, you just, everything you write, you can read. So that'll be just a real quick steamrolling event. And uh, I have a lot more stuff coming up. I'll put in the chat. And thank you very much, everyone, for putting up. Awesome, man. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yes. Also tune in for Cafe Generalissimo, which is every other week, every other Monday. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, we'll share that link so you can be in tune with all those things that are worth checking out. As you noticed, uh, these online communities spread out and we got all sorts of different places where you can share work or just just tune in. And, and, and catch something amazing. So <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and go from uh, Maine. Uh, or are you really over there? No, uh -huh. thank you for sharing that family history, by the way. That was that was pretty pretty cool stuff. Um, we're gonna go to the Bronx, right? We're, uh, you know, representing the, bon the Bronx and the Bronx Art and Fun Hub. I said it right this time. I didn't stumble over it. Uh, <laughs> we have RMT, you down with RMT. It's Ron Ma Mark Thompson. What is up, man? As always, great to have you on. Go ahead and take it away. Thank you so much, Richie, for your wonderful introduction. And I am so confused. Like, uh, Ish Kip people was Brian, and I'm confused about other things today here. So I don't know. You know, maybe it's just me. So <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to read you from the Bronx Memoir Project, uh, which is uh, published uh, annually by the Bronx Council on the Arts. Uh, they've been up to volume five. Uh, I've been in three so far, and this is from 2018. Uh, when I uh, submitted an essay and they featured it. And I'm going to read you like two pages from it. I'm going to time myself to make sure I don't go over five minutes because you have a long list of performers today. So I'm going to read you an essay from three years ago called Basement Buddies. Tough, nasty, hardcore. Friends warned me about moving to the Bronx. Even my mother, whose German feet had never graced the place, was shocked when she found out where I had chosen to move to. Yet, here I was, alone and nearing the end of my first week in this New York City borough, sharing a sublet with a stranger in a big apartment complex. complex. Aside from my commutes to and from work, I kept to myself. But the time had come to take care of an important duty, and I had to risk interacting with others. So there I was, carrying a big load on my bag. I carefully walked down the steps and slowly opened the door. I didn't want to draw attention to myself. Too late, two women, the only people there, saw me and looked at, looked at me with big, excited eyes. I was 21 years old at that time, and they were in their 30s, maybe even 40s. Would I be new meat to them, fresh prey? Good morning, they both yelled. I didn't want to appear rude, so I uttered a quiet greeting and smiled. I shyly looked around the room, which was the size of two large living rooms. I liked the clean scent in the air. The women didn't seem nasty or hardcore to me. I felt relieved, despite the indoor humidity. Still, not wanting to be naive, I made a good study of my surroundings. There were two small windows near the ceiling with a view of Bronx Park East, near Allerton Avenue. I was sure that on weekdays you could see plenty of hasty feet and hear honking cars. However, this was a Saturday early morning, a fall day in the 1990s. So traffic was nearly non-existent, feet and cars alike. I noticed three rows of top wa loader washing machines and one wall covered top to bottom with dryers. 
At the opposite end were chairs, all empty at this moment. On the way, I'm sorry, I realized that the women still looked at me. I felt a bit intimidated and I wanted to avoid speaking to them. So I walked toward the back. I unloaded all my clothes into the washer and started reading the instructions on the lid. One of the women noticing my bewilderment came over. Honey, you need to separate your colors from your whites. I paused for a moment. Oh, thank you. How nice of her. She asked me, first time using commercial washing machines? I nodded. Back in Germany, my mother always took care of washing the laundry. There were no public laundromats. Had I learned from her how to wash clothes? Nope. Dividing my clothes into the washers, I tried hard to hide my underwear beneath the shirts as she, as one of the women, introduced herself as Lucinda. A few minutes later, the other woman joined us. Hi, my name is Kishira. I shook both their hands. I'm Ron. I learned that they have lived in the buildings on the opposite end of the complex. And that's where I'm going to end it. You can read the whole story in the Bronx Memo Project. I'm sorry I fooled you at the beginning, but there was, it was an innocent basement. Thank you, Richie. I appreciate it. No, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Uh, <clears throat> so you want to give a shout out to, to the Bronx Art and Fun Hub. What do you guys got coming up soon? And of course, where people can find you online and, and your, your stuff coming up. Sorry, I got muted myself. Uh, you can find me online, usually with the new Regan Poets Cafes, Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, um, and with Be Warms here on Monday evenings thereafter. Uh, Bron um, Bronx Art and Fun Up is at BXAFH on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'll put that in the chat. Uh, this week, we have our regular monthly writing uh, prompts um, workout, where I give both photo prompts and uh, text-based writing prompts and we rewrite and read to it. Uh, I'm going to have a stage play reading coming up later this month, uh, Ekfrestrik Poetry and Prose. And besides Bronx Art and Fun Up, I also moonlight with Marissa Prada at The Word is Right. Uh, twice a month, I host uh, writing workshops there. I alternate Wednesdays with Nick P's Open Mic. And the one coming up is the day before Thanksgiving. Um, we're going to write in Thanksgiving honor, we're going to write praise and gratitude uh, poems and prose. And I'll put the, uh, the link for that as well in the chat. Thank you so much, Richie. I appreciate you. I appreciate this avenue that you're giving us here, this platform for all of us. Very nice. Awesome, man. Yeah. And thank you for all that you do. You know, again, I always see you helping out with Nuyo with the tech and everything. And um, <clears throat> yeah, gratitude. Always got to practice it, right? It's it, it just it's so important in our lives. Uh, just like like Lizzie said earlier with kindness. Uh, yeah, Ron Mark Thompson. That's what's up. Thank you, man. Um, all right. So we're going to keep going. We have a debut, at least here for this show. Uh, we have uh, an editor from Nomadic Press. And so first of all, I got to give props to Nomadic Press. I always see a lot of cool things going on there. Joining us from Fayetteville, Arkansas, we have Noel Serna. All right. What is up? Did I? Do you prefer Serna or Serna? Serna. Serna, that's what's up. I knew I should have known that, right? Uh, oh, Noelle, right. what's up? Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Excited to be here. Um, I was invited by my Neo friends, so thank you guys for uh, bringing me out. I've got um, two poems for you. I'll start with the sad one first, and then I'll give you the not sad one. So we'll get that one out of the way first. This is called Cathedral. The days following my soulmate's death I am like an abandoned building, all cathedral and no music, all architectural bone and no organ, no heat, no spark, no cold, no light, only echoes of echoes where feelings once were gutted, his absence ringing in the spaces between every wall, his shape an empty shimmer of air in every drafty hallway, his voice a mere memory of an echo heard in a once furnished room somewhere, a sound wave I can't quite place. His absence is everywhere, every peaceful moment filled with his nothingness, a wrecking ball, leaving these skeletal remains vacant, 
only structural, reaching into the night sky with exposed frame, hoping a single gust of wind will not be enough to topple it all tonight. And my second piece <clears throat> is called Liturgy for the Lost. Last year, you pierced your ears. You grew up pastor's daughter in a denomination that taught you your body belonged to God and to man before it could ever belong to you. Taught you jewelry was a sin and piercings were abominations relegated to something the lost did. While most of your classmates wore earrings from the time they were babies, here you are, 34 years old and still learning how to navigate the holes you chose less than a year ago. There are times you feel less than, times when you have to ask for help getting an earring in. There are the really beautiful but big earrings you purchased but are still too afraid to wear. There is beauty in fear, in knowing you are not ready but that you can choose when you are. Religion robbed you of choice for so long, taught you men could say what was acceptable for your body, do with it what they wished. Yesterday, you cried because you couldn't get your left ear in to cooperate, had to call your best friend, have her FaceTime you through it. No, this moment is still a choice. No, that renovations require moments of breaking. Today, you arrange the new earring stand you bought, carefully place the studs, unwrap the heavy pairs of earrings you so carefully curated as you look at the happiness on your vanity. Remember the years you would stare at your classmates' ears longingly, knowing you could rock the earrings they chose to wear, the jewelry they didn't have to hide from their moms, how you dreamed up the outfits you would wear, if only. No, this is celebration. Breathe in the choices you have made for yourself. You were once told your body was a temple. This was the reason you were indoctrinated against piercings, against tattoos, against choice. Remember when your Bible was written, only men were allowed to be priests. So it is only fitting they believed themselves God, made you believe choice was a desecration. If it be defilement by man, then let it be called worship. If by you, then let it be called abomination when you are ready to wear the biggest pair of earrings you own. Remember to brush back your hair, extend your neck as you walk and let them swing. Let them be pendants, let them be flags, let them be beatitudes. Blessed are they that renovate temples for they shall rebuild peace. This is how temples are reclaimed, how holy ground is restored. Let the congregation of those still in captivity say hallelujah. As you walk past, let them say God has brought them out of their captivity and she be looking fine in some earrings. Let the flash of color from your ears show them a taste of holy. Let the temple be restored to its former glory. Let the people say amen. Thank you. Ooh, wow. Oh, oh, man. Man. oh my God. <laughs> right? Ah, Amazing. That was so great. It's good to hear you again. Loves it. Yes. Thank you so much uh, for, for joining us today. And, uh, and yes. again, so much love for, for the invite. Um, Noelia, thank you. Uh, do you have anything that you'd like to promote or plug right now? Um, well, we have a, an active audience on YouTube or and check, checking this place out. Um, not really. We have our open mics at Nomadic Press every Friday. So please come out. We can, you can find us on Facebook and it's a great group. Awesome. Yes, I keep seeing those and uh, I, I should stay in one of these days to make it to, to one of those. Things have gotten very busy, but uh, please, yeah, please, you know, you're always welcome. Anytime you got a Monday, you have open, you know, you, you want to share a little something, you're always welcome here. It's the late, late show. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and again, if you guys are new and haven't already done so, follow us um, online, Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. You can just type that in on Facebook instagram or twitter and it should show up um uh, man yeah shout out to nomadic press thank you so much and of course noelia um all right yo we're gonna go to another debut here tonight we have Haley vaith joining us from cali um and she's already ready she has her, her instagram handle right there on the name Haley, what's up welcome to this space and of course go ahead and take it away hi thanks guys for having me uh invited by Gigi as well and I uh, frequent the nomadic open mics so please come I've been coming to New York more and making more friends and I'm excited to be here I've got two pieces um 
both one's old, one's newer. Uh, this one is called Two Faced in the Plastics Ward. Behind the waning blue curtains of the operating room, a sword swallower is teaching my throat to hug the width of a breathing tube quietly as the anesthesia siren sings sweet lullabies into my teenage veins. Quiet falls as the surgeon enters from the wings, his magician's hands scrubbed clean and clutching a hungry blade, ready to make my sunken bones disappear and a symmetrical woman's face appear in its place. After he closes me up, every assistant takes great care in stitching the edges of my upper lips, their fingerprints embedded deep in the porcelain slopes of my cheekbones and the pink cotton candy of my gums. From above, the gallery whispers their appreciation for the cut, for this great Phoenix transformation and the broken jaw that built this gilded, they built this gilded terrace upon. After the handshakes and pictures have finished, the ushers deliver me to a family of mirrored faces, busting at the seams with silver linings and congratulations for our good fortune, their moon-faced daughter. When I greet them, the bow of my mouth stutters while I search for the shape of my voice in the topography of my reflection. I ask them for my name and no one replies. I got one more. This one is called The Opal and it's sort of a love letter to San Francisco. Like a stone in my pocket, I've begun to turn lost memories across my palm for sport. Nothing large enough to bruise or pull me down too far, but heavy enough to remember that I used to be lighter than I am now. I used to be able to make decisions in a glitter blown blink. One magic eight ball shake and I'd know if it was a good idea to drive to San Francisco with the boys next door, plans or money or proper senses of direction be damned. We picked a hotel on Van Ness from an old phone book crammed into the back seat. And at check-in, we passed for a band just passing through with our acoustic guitars and rings on every finger. When they handed me the brass key with its speckled snakeskin patina over the blade, I tucked it into my sleeve like it was the key to my first home. Our room had the most beautiful brick wall view I had ever seen, blushing shag carpet, vintage armchairs peeling at the feet, and not one single smoke detector. When I climbed into the clawfoot bathtub and shut the door, I snapped just enough smoke into my lungs to pretend I could paddle through the rain that fell for the next seven days. At night, we made the 24-hour diner attached to the hotel lobby our sanctuary, a retro fever dream of pink neon with its autographed emerald fenders and checkerboard floors, and palm tree jukeboxes with the most satisfying buttons I had ever pressed. At midnight, I ordered the pancakes and sprinkles and we toasted with our flasks before laying down in the candy crushed vinyl booths to count the growing bubblegum skyscrapers growing under our table. We drove the city like every inch of it was an aquarium and told stories of all the times we treaded water too far from home. Not one of them attempted to save me from the ghosts that crept through the radio or convinced me that I was the most beautiful girl they had ever seen chewing on a pen cap. They didn't drop one tipsy kiss on my forehead or tuck one rowdy curl behind my ear. And eventually I stopped planning which powdered face I should wear or how bewitching I should make the timber of my laugh. They never asked for my secrets. And after an entire week had passed, I had made no one fall in love with me. And instead, found the room to just exist. Thank you guys so much. Oh, damn. Thank you. Hey, yes. Woo! Thank you. One of us. Oh. One of us. One of us. One of us. One of us. So I am sure that you guys have, have heard that chat before. That just means you have a home here as well. Of course, uh, 
definitely we should check out nomadic press open mics as well um thank you Haley noelia for joining us and uh that was that was i mean Haley. so you have your instagram page you have it right there right on on the corner it is poetry by Haley. There yes you know. twitter and instagram i'm really bad at twitter but i'm working on it and uh trying to get a chat book together at least for some publications so if anybody wants a writing buddy just email me <laughs> awesome yes thank you um and again you know always welcome back got to keep coming back um <clears throat> sweet Thank you. And of course, thank you, Gigi, for inviting. Um, and uh, I know a lot of you guys also participated at the other mics, like the New York Rican. Uh, <clears throat> I tuned in. I could. I usually tune in and, and try and check out the show earlier. Um, and I only was able to catch a few people, but I was able to catch our next performer, uh, who you can always catch here at the online mic. Uh, I was super happy to, to, to hear what they did, uh, including read a, a little bit of translation from, from Matthew's um matthew why am i drawing his blank right now <laughs> it's been so long matthew we miss you it's <laughs> yes uh <laughs> not? Yes, yes. yeah um so uh we do have liam s in the house and is always one of our favorites um so lee what is up how are you doing today welcome back i'm excited because i'm still up after two social interactions today so that's awesome <laughs> Um, I do have one new and one old, so I'll go with the new one first. This is called Dear Cis People. Repeat after me. My pronouns are not preferred, optional, an alternative for you to ignore, overlook, change when you don't feel like believing me about who I am. When you don't really care for respecting, acknowledging my existence, when we argue and you seek a surefire way to shake me to my core. Dear cis people, it's been years since you last opened, let alone read any biology books, peer reviewed journals, read or listened to the emotional labor that I and many others have screened and cried at the top of our fucked up lungs. Biological gender is as wide and buried as your excuses for why you pick and choose the words of a god not ours to abandon scared and lonesome children. Gatekeep life's basic experiences, shock us into casting away who we are. Don't you think it's a little creepy to change your opinion about who I tell you I am based on your own assumptions about what lies between my legs? Don't you think it's a bit disturbing you constantly thinking of me what hides under this shirt or is tangled on this vocal cords to the point of engraving in your own mind your own assumptions then lash out with your tongue these hypotheses onto me dear cis people my gender is not a personal attack on you but please do take this hereby letter personally this is about you you know your names your multiple slips that I will no longer pretend are mistakes, your pretense at allyship, hollow empathy and sympathy, followed by your barrage of endless, dead naming, misgendering, and passive aggressive bullshit jabs that do, not, do nothing but ship away at this already thin patience. So here's the end of it, dear cis people. I will now meet you at your level, stomp straight to the ground where you scurry away like pestering little cockroaches. Dear cis people, fuck around and find out. That's one. Ah, and then this one is an old one. It's called Who Thought You That? Who advise you on the benefits of trapping us in swarms, upsetting us against each other as you watch from afar and laughed? Who told you being pinned down, hands in places you shamed, no permission given, trespassing, made, a, made us wet? Who thought you that? who demonstrated how to put your hands against our throats and choke the life out of us long enough to see the halo shatter over your heads, who tutored you on how to hate our existence while getting hot and bothered by our bodies, who showed you the means to control us was to shame us, who thought you that, who showed you what you liked on who you liked it, who told you to put to practice in every warm body you coveted, who explained to you it is better to like it when we don't, that it is preferred we don't feel as you let yourself go. Who taught you that? Who showed you that anger made you, who showed you that anger made you memorize the names you call us? Putas, faciles, pirujas, the ways to the vases. 
who mentored you so you would follow the same patterns we have seen time and time again, same disregard, same hatred, different hands and different faces. Who taught you that? To walk the fragile thread of killing us or loving us. It is enough. It's been enough since the early days of your violence. Now the tongue of my mother will ignite you in words. The hands of my sisters cast the first stones against your heads, paint your faces red, and we'll show you how to feel shame. We will teach you now. And that's it. Yes, Lee. MV Lee. MV Lee. Lee. And I love it. I love it. Lee, so beloved. Thank you so much. And such a nice All right. Yeah. There's the TV there. Um, yes. Thank you, Lee. Uh, do you have anything coming up you'd like to promote or share? Uh, and of course, your socials. Uh, my socials, I will share my link three. And I also announcement I am open for translations again. So if you're interested on my link tree, there's an option in there that says you want your work translated and you can just enter your information and I'll email you so that way we can get in contact. I do, uh, it, it, of course, like I do charge for them, but I work with the writer based on their means. Wonderful. That's that's so amazing to know. And I've, I've said this before, but, but Lee has like one of the coolest link tree setups like I've ever seen, like all the links are there and, and just uh, the features. So go, go pay a visit, check out the appropriate links. And yes, definitely look into getting your, your, your book published. If that's your market, you know what I'm saying? Like if it, if it, if it makes sense. Um, all right. So, oh man, what a killer lineup this has been, right guys? It's been it's amazing. Um, we're going to keep it going. We're going to go to Pittsburgh, and I'm super stoked to hear this upcoming episode of Fincabulary podcast on, on Anchor and Spotify, the words of the prophets. Did I say that? Yeah, words of the prophets. Yo, um, and so, as always, yo, it's it's super amazing to welcome them on the show. We have Vale Larkin. What is up, Vale? Happy to have you back. Take it away. Hi. Um, yeah, tomorrow on Fincabulary, my one act play, we did an audio version, me, um, uh, music by Doors in the Labyrinth, and Lee Martinez read a couple of the scenes for me. So it's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to read something, and then I'm going to play a scene that Lee is in. For whites only. We have cast away our stones to take up rifles and explosives. We've taken earth and clay to build our monstrous cities. All green paved to gray, glass and metal like the teeth that eat through our mother in our quest for power, speed, and always, always more. We have cast away our friends, our fellow beings, lively and curious of us at first, but the fear, the fear in every eye we prey upon. And make no mistake, we have done this thing. And not all humanity, the very nature of us, but our specific caustic greed. Let me be clear. Oh, no. Oh. This is the wrong version. Hold on. I'll just pick it up where I left off. <laughs> I edited this and it clearly didn't get to my thing. Apologies for that. We have done this thing, and not all humanity, the very nature of us, but our specific caustic greed. Out of the North, we've come like a plague on all houses, like the last seal, like the flood, like nothing natural. We've destroyed what we might have learned. Look around. No, not now, not after, but before we marched them all into the sea. Before we burned their homes and lives and past and futures, before we looked at the vast and glorious variety of our mother world and in our spiteful fear made of it an inferno. Millennia of feet trod lightly, learning their home, feeding her and following her ways, 
all those humans, all that variety, and all understanding somehow where and to whom they belonged. We have slaughtered our own prophets. They were never going to be our neighbors. They were always going to be the dark-eyed wanderers, the strangers in our strange and passing lands, the shamans, the wisdom-bound, the arcane and obscure, and the so very unlike our rigid, stringent, jealous gods. We've beaten our plowshares to missiles. We've mined our mother hollow. We, we did this, you and me. The rest of you can just ignore this. So really quick, I'll share screen. unaccompanied by a parent or guardian. Of those children, an estimated 40% are members of the LGBTQI community. Once there was a young man called Christopher Robin. He was always called this, but it was not his name. His mother, schizophrenic, no father, no siblings. He raised himself on the street and his mother too. He was hard won muscle and stoicism, but his eyes and voice were always gentle. He sold doors that were illegal to people not permitted to take up any room. It was an improvement, he felt, on the things that children must sometimes endure to live. He was beautiful and stronger than he let on. No easy means. We're waking up. The smell of sun warm dust like a promise in the air. No huddling and huffing a damp day away. No, we're rising. All of us together, our fledging flock. We're shaking off torn blankets and dreams of some mysterious world where we are children instead of what we are. Free. We are that fast. Our boards are bodies, hard and lean. We slide past into the theming streets. We slip along through narrowing mazes of steel and flesh, horns and hollers to shear us on our way. Speed's not the only trick, but it's the real rush. The roaring, soaring sweetness, the ecstasy of falling forever. We're not aiming at that final target. We just won't flinch if it hits. We are alive, more than all those stiff-colored, souped-up specimens, living their aquarium lives, watched constantly by their bosses for any sign they should be fished out and left to flounder. They always walk with grim faces, like they're going to be late for the part where food falls from the sky. They're trapped, but at least they're comfortable, they say, into their pillows at night. We're breaking the concrete waves of the here, the now, the never-ending moment. We're not the face of the future, and none of us look back, not once. We're not racing toward, but away. And who would blame birds who fled a burning nest? We may flee, but it's still flying. Flying, sky high, forever.
We're a liquid. We feel our space, we flow, forming our own obstacles and splitting fractal-like into deltas of scintillating energy. We are moved by every pebble on the pavement, but we stop for nothing. We see, scarring our paths, scoring the dust of the road in wild worlds. We ride and we wear down the hardness of the city. All right, yo, that was great. Love the production. Uh, as always, if you guys want to show some props, show some love. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, I'm waiting. For, I'm, I'm so excited for that to drop. Um, is there anything else you'd like so to promote cool. or share right now? Uh, no, that's my my main thing coming up right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I've got links up there for. Um, vocabulary and four doors in the labyrinth who did the music thanks my bad i was i was muted um that's so cool i can't wait to hear all of it uh congrats uh, on the on that collaboration to people we, we really love and that that music yo that's so cool um thank you thank you thank you for sharing that um cool Whew, you guys are all amazing. These these are always so fun. You know, Mondays like before, you know, were the, the night that sucked. You know, Mondays, come on. It's the start of the week and and now it's like something I just look forward to, like as as a regular thing here. Uh getting to see all you guys do these amazing things. Um all right, yo, so let's keep going because we do have a good list. I want to make sure everyone has their time to do their thing. Uh we're gonna go ahead and go to uh from Pittsburgh to South Euclid, Ohio, where we're gonna bring in the no inaugural po uh, poet laureate. Of South Euclid. Uh, that's right. It is Doc. Doc Jenning in the house. What's up, man? How are you doing today? Go and take the stage. I am here at least. I think I am. <laughs> Immersed in immense endlessness of an ever-changing infinity of an ever-changing multiverse. We swirl through galaxies strung like pearls, dance among stars scattered like sand, shudder through chthonian dark of between. Time does not exist, but is altered, changed forever. We are, in the, we are on an eternal journey beyond. Voices of stones from, from cracks between secret and seen flow ancient melodies in voices of stones, intoning rainbows and arpeggios of song, echoing music of grass and wind, so quiet, mountains whisper anamnesis, embracing silent sunrise kiss and syzygy of forever. Since someone mentioned Frida Kahlo, this is Frida, Alejandra, Sylvia, and me. It's for Frida Kahlo, Alejandra, Picharnik, Syl Sylvia Plath, and myself. I regret we never met. We four strangers to others strange. We think of each other, kindred souls seeking others across the web of time. We understand what others cannot, our shared strangeness, our shared honesty. And I'll finish with time within time. Days pass within days and time within time. They display all the arcane beauty and terror of the multiverse. 
in echoes, echoes of light and shadow, echoes meaning everything, meaning nothing, all converge as one in the Tao of being and harmonics of ascension to become. Thank you. All right, thank you, Doc. Richie had to step out for a bit. <laughs> Richie had to step out for a bit, so I'm taking over for just a little bit. Uh, but yes, thank you very much, Doc. Uh, where can the people find you online if that's what they want to do? Uh, they can find me on Facebook as Doc Janning. Pure and simple. Okay, short and sweet. I like that. Okay, well, uh, coming up next to the mic is uh, someone that we're all a big fan of here. Uh, someone who has been to our fair city and yes. and uh, and quite loved the sights. We took him hiking. He had a great time, and we're happy to have. And uh, looks like he's back home with a nice big bookcase behind him. And we're happy to hear the urban cowboy poet. Yes. Going, <clears throat> I'm not muted, right? Going myself as U, UCP U Capella today. This is from my a previous life. Before I was an urban cowboy poet, I was a gospel singer. Before that, I was a barbershop tenor. Before that, I was a stand up comic. But this is from my barbershop days. I'm going to play an audio file here. Hope you can hear it right. It was working. Okay, I got another way to do it. All right, let's start over. Oh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Hey UCP, what's up? I, I I'm sorry, Mr. Intro. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Okay. You see the the comments there? Yeah, let me stop. Cool. Yeah, that'll help a lot. Okay. You couldn't hear that? No, it was it was being suppressed. It sounds so oh funny to God. say it like that, right? <laughs> Don't suppress me. Um. So yeah, I think you have to enable original sound or uh. Yeah, in How do your, I do in that? your sound set, in your sound settings, um, you might have to go I can, to. Your... So I could I I'm playing on a different computer. I could play it on this computer that I'm zooming on. Which does that matter? I think the sound will still be affected. Okay, um, so how do I do that? Um, 
<clears throat> just out of curiosity on your on your upper left hand corner of your of your window is there an yeah. option to uh, enable original re- sound on. off original sound on okay turn it on and that might on. be a little better yeah sorry about that it's all good you want me to start over um let's do a quick test and see see how it sounds yeah okay I, I meant I meant to mention that before. Tell me if right at the beginning whether you could hear it or not. Okay. Um, how's that? It's a little low. What's that? The volume is a little low. Oh really? Yeah. Mm, still, still pretty low. Like you, you can't even really hear it. Really? Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, <laughs> never mind. All right, actually. I can try one more thing. All right. Sorry about that. Um. No, oh, I know. We'll have to we'll we'll schedule a, a Zoom meeting so we can we can uh, nail down the the settings. But yeah, for now, if you want to do an acapella without the music, how's this? Um, I could barely hear it, but I'm wearing headphones, so other people might not it? be able to. No, it's still low. Yeah, I mean, it still might be doing some noise suppression, some automatic stuff. So, Nathan, like Nathaniel said here in the chat, you may actually have to go to the the settings and and bring choose uh, either turn it off or, or make the settings low. Turn it off, great. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's tricky. Yeah, doing sound on Zoom is tricky. Still. Okay. I don't know what to do. Mm. Okay. Can you hear me talking? Yeah. Oh, we can hear you just fine. Yeah. Well, I muted myself too. Um, Neither way worked. You couldn't hear the song? No, no. It was, it was being, I guess it's just outside or too loud. It was, it was, it was being brought down. So. It was yeah. blast, blasting my ears off. <laughs> oh man, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, I mean, if you just want to do something on capella for now, and and uh, we can we can uh, figure another day to figure out the sound settings. Yeah, if you want, I'm gonna still go. <clears throat> gee, <clears throat> a little throat thing. The New Year is gonna have a New Year's Eve party, and Marissa said she's gonna have an online New Year's, New Year's Eve party, and. I don't know which to go, so <clears throat> that brings up the musical question. <clears throat> Maybe it's just too early in the game, but I thought I'd ask you just the same. What are you doing, New Year's? New Year's Eve. Can you hear me now? Yeah, this is fun. Wonder whose arms are holding you so tight when it's exactly twelve o'clock at night, bringing in the New Year's, New Year's Eve. Maybe I'm crazy to suppose that I could be the guy you chose. Out of a thousand invitations you receive, just in case I stand one little chance, here comes the que- jackpot question in advance. What are you doing, New Year's? New Year's Eve. 
maybe I'm crazy to suppose that I could be the guy you chose out of a thousand invitations you receive just in case i stand one little chance here comes the jackpot question in advance what are you doing new year's new year's eve Yeah, man, that was awesome. Perfect. That's that's oh. all awesome, awesome. Thank you. I'd like you to hear the whole quartet sometime if I figure out how to do it. Yeah, we'll we'll go over that if you if you stick around like uh, an after party. We'll 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 go over the settings with you where there's more time and can, we can make okay. that happen. And the song I recorded in your studio. Tell me about that after. Oh yes, of course, absolutely. All right, thank you. Um, appreciate thank it, man. You. Thanks for coming on. Uh, <laughs> it's good to see you again. Yeah. All right. You, you can uh, find my. Urban Legends on Urban Cowboy Poetry on YouTube and Facebook. All right. Thank you. Yes. And as you alluded to, we, we recorded some stuff in my in my studio when he was in El Paso. So, all right. Cool. Let's keep going because we got a lot of peeps still on here uh, patiently waiting. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, and thank you, Kit, for, for taking over. I had to run an errand really quick. Um, it happens, you know, I'm like, oh, dang, it's the middle of the show. Okay. I got this. I got this. Okay. So, um, oh, man check it out it's been a while i mean it's always great when you can make it on joining us from wisconsin he is the author of atrophy of the boy who became a wishing well uh you can find them online uh nc beck poetry uh various places um but let's we have nathaniel beck in the house nathaniel what is up man first of all welcome back to the show and go ahead hey. and take it away man thank you so much for having me back and uh it's great to to be back here um to enjoy this wonderful space with you all um so if it's cool uh i have um three things uh for you guys uh this evening um something new something old and something borrowed uh so if that's cool um and uh so i'm gonna start off with uh something borrowed and uh that is from my wonderful uh wonderful wonderful poet lid havens um and their book uh choke cherry and they are an amazing poet uh so if you don't know them um or know of their work um yeah i don't know i i just uh love their work so uh this is um the title poem so choke cherry um I imagine my uncle and grandfather's last moments, my own hands a triangle around my neck, my thumbs just barely touch. I am hardy, like an oak fighting a chainsaw. I cough sap into the sink, and the porch light goes out. When I was 13, I spent three months trying to get bath water out of my nose, my blue socks sticky on the tile floor. The nurse asked me what was on my mind. But I turned the Walkman's volume up to its maximum. I'm almost 22 now and stumbling over my own memory like deforestation. What have I lost? My wallet, four wisdom teeth. I had a roommate who stole all my silverware. My parents' wedding cake is rotting in the freezer. My grandfather's last words to me are in, the str in a stranger's handwriting. I guess I'll just say it. My uncle broke his own neck while I was on my tiptoes trying to hang a mirror up in my bedroom. Everything my grandfather ate for two months straight became liquid in his lungs. I'm still as tall as I was at 10. I need to get a new inhaler. The nurse asks if I'm a smoker. No, but my parents are. No, but my best friends are. No. But when I was a kid, we almost lost our house in a wildfire. No, but choking to death seems to run in my family. Sometimes I wake up gasping for air like my bed is on fire. Somewhere in Illinois, there's a tree named after my uncle. It could be any tree, though. How could I know which one? 
Would I see the smoke? So yeah, that's uh, Choke Cherry by Lyd Havens. Uh, they're an amazing poet. Uh, I absolutely love them. Uh, so here's something new. Uh, I read this at the Nuyo this, uh, this evening. Um, the first time I loved anyone, it was the ground. Wood chip dressed and full of leaves, their name was afternoon sandbox worn out sneakers full of hair their name was anything that collects rainwater the first time i kissed anyone it was the earth knees hands lips a feast of concrete and storm drain kisses gravel mouthed sack of ice i learned to taste the pain of a good love or everything that claimed pieces of my body and called it so Attraction was dirt, tilled and finger deep, tongue and hunger raw. We were as clean as our bodies would leave us. Attraction was an excavation of limbs. We were an unashamed morning of harvested names, a smuggling palms across borders. If this was a metaphor, let it be of this, the lie, the child-shaped blood, the trust, innocence, and all I can recall of me when the lights are off. How I want my body back from where it, we seated it. The first time I called them anything but the sky, I was enough <gasps> candle wax and flame to make bed sheets of my skin to address my vulnerable by name, write it out with anything that would seep from my body. The first time I called them anything but the sky, I clenched my fist for five days, made my arm a pole and fished my father from my throat. If this is the lie, let it be of wearing, of skin, of everything we have dre dressed ourselves with, of the button I could never find, the shirt, the sneakers, worn and worn again. How do you know when something has been used too much to be used again? Is existence a type of thrift store we make of ourselves? If this is a question, let it be of everything we undressed. The bed, the night, the phone, the fuck, the goodbye, the goodbye. If this is a form of leaving, let it be like all the trees that we undressed our years from ourselves with. A cyclical kind of death. Is there a type of spring for this? A type of winter that I can come back from? Abused flowering of lipped and storming skin. If we are all destined to die, then let everything we do be a metaphor for a last meal. Let this be an outstretching of mouth or outlasting of mouths, a staggering fight of lusting conversations we keep with our cheeks, a taste of lungs. Let us learn how to be hungry again for a type of skin we can reside in. This learning of hearts, this beacon of reminded leaving, how I want to hold the air again and not let it escape me, how I want to live in this. The tomorrow I have now called home, the survival I fell for and keep bruising my heart with. The first time I was brave, I named it the morning I never asked for. The refracting, the refracting face of an empty glass, bottle, boy, gritted teeth, loved and body empty, ra raged and thrashing of forgotten street signed names. First time I was brave, I named it after a mirror you left in the bottom cabinet. And even when you discarded it, I realized how it was still worth keeping. Thank you. And um, one last one, if that's cool. In Wisconsin, it is told as tradition. Tales of boys turned men, rites of passage, unsettling the trees. There are story, stories written in the snow here that will last well after it is melted. We are all the silent roosters of wilderness, 
cracking the morning sun like an egg perched on the edge of hunting the shadowless stalkers of nature. I don't think you ever forget the first time you reach the summit of an ecosystem, praying on the forest like you are your own natural disaster. I remember the first time I held a gun. Like excitement had a weight to it. Like power had a weight to it. Like fear had a weight to it. I know the hesitation that rests at the edge of a trigger. There is a bull behind this fence. There is no room for fear. No toddler toys and blankets, just the deer and the silence. It's time to be a man now. So saddle up and take the shot. Things are much easier to process when at a distance, but there is no poetic way to say you killed something. There is no beauty in death, but maybe I just can't describe the way eyes look when there isn't life in them. Maybe I need to man up, you know, get over it. It was just a deer. Guns are meant to kill things anyways, right? Just ask the assault rifles, the high capacity mags. Maybe this is the rite of passage we asked for. But there is no venison here. When we've turned streetlights to trees, nightclubs to forests, classrooms to open fields. There is no poetic way to say Parkland happened. Las Vegas happened. Pulse happened. There is no poetic way to say weapons of war are legal, that we keep searching for manhood behind a gun, that killing is okay if the police do it. But they say it wasn't the gun. Say it was the security guard, the teacher, the pill bottle society. They say hunting helps control the population of animals. They never talk about what we should do when we become the deer. Thank you. Oh, I think that's my favorite poem that you've ever written. It's oh, so great. Always great. Damn. <laughs> right. Oh, Shit, damn, man. damn, like, damn. Excuse me? <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> right. Oh, I love you lot, all. Dick. Missed you all. Wow. <laughs> Oh my God, man! Yes, uh, poet, poet envy is a real thing, right? I see so many folks friends like, like, damn it! I wish what the right people are like. There's no other response, but amazing stuff, man. Yes, standing ovation. I agree. Uh, Nathaniel, you're gonna be featured, man. Tell us about that, and of course, we can find you online. Yeah, um, so I am featuring at Fumfa Live uh, Poets and Writers this uh, weekend, uh, Sunday. November 21st. Um, so definitely come and check that out. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Um, I'm going to uh, do some new old uh, stuff that, you know, um, you guys probably have heard before and then some you probably haven't. Um, so yeah, but uh, I'm so grateful to, to have that. And then um, yeah, uh, definitely check out my book, which is Atrophy of the Boy Who Became a Wishing Well. It's this beautiful little gem right here. And um, yeah, it uh, details uh, growing up in Wisconsin, so uh, and manhood and um, kind of what it means for masculinity and um, kind of uh, if you kind of got some of uh, what I what I spit in some of my poetry or whatever, um, you definitely kind of get how I feel about that. So um, also uh the kyle rittenhouse uh trial just uh concluded today so um they're now uh obviously uh you know deciding on that and um yeah we'll see how that works out but uh yeah our relationship to guns are, are very interesting you know um especially you know when someone can like just blatantly shoot somebody uh kill them and then uh, proceed to claim self-defense when other people try and stop them and then shoot more people. So, um, yeah, but uh, love you all. And uh, thank you for, for this space, Richie. I really appreciate it. Awesome, man. Thank you. Um, yeah, shout, shout out to uh, Three Mile Heart Press. And yeah, that's uh, I'm, I've been very anxious about uh they're in the house thing and where that's going um so let's let's be be here for each other and and of course through our art you know be able to to speak what we need to speak and, and get through that um okay thank you man uh wisconsin uh now i have patty on the list but i don't i, I think she was here for a brief moment and like probably had to peace out so 
just sending love to Patty. She's always amazing when she gets to spit. So maybe she'll make it at some point. Uh, so for now, we'll just keep going through the list. Uh, and we're going to go to the Meadowlands where we have the amazing, the one and only real Nick P, Nick Paleologos. What is up, brother? Welcome back. Always great having you. Go ahead and do your thing. This book that I did my thing for. Hey, look, it's mine. Oh, wait, you made Oh, it. that's nice. That's nice. That's nice if you Zoom to just mute me like that. That was very rude. But anyways, this is my book. You should definitely go get it. It's really awesome. Orders are being sent out and everything like that. So those that have order already, you have, um, it's being sent out. I'll send you all the stuff and everything. In any event, I got three pieces for you all tonight. Um, we're going to get really dark with this shit. <laughs> so <clears throat> this first one... Well, the first two were done um, in Falcon Queso's workshop, so you should definitely go check that out. Here we go. First one's called Superheroism. When I was 24, I had sex. 24 was an age that people seemed to like me again. After all, nobody likes you when you're 23. Blink-182 said that. This woman made a threat to me during sex and... I paused. She decided to nibble close to a bite, not quite rip off the genitalia, but a threat. It took me six years to process this threat and to realize I was assaulted. I was damaged. I was broken. I was in pain. I ignored it at first, shrugged it off as nothing, just like when I told her I wanted to be a poet. And she smirked and laughed in my ass. I submitted to a horror movie that I did not, that did not have a happy ending where the building, the body, burned away, where I thought I was free to see a new life beyond my body, a celestial connection. I was drowned in pain, suppression of memories where I had too much to process, my sensory overloaded, I needed a new CPU because I was subhuman in this DCU. I was disassociated from a Superman to don a red hood. I was the Martian being manhunted. I thought I found Wonder Woman found an enchantress that no June moon could hold back. Someone else possessed her body. It wasn't Starfire, Blackfire, or Silver Banshee. She wasn't the person I fell in love with, and I was not in love with my body. I've had my problems with it, and still do. Even though I know all the ins and outs, I wanted to be a superhero when I grew up. I didn't become Batman, The Flash, or John Constantine. I became something greater. I became a poet. With one. The second one right here is also done in Falcon Queso's workshop, titled Drag to the Grave. It's quite simple to talk people into coffins. All it takes is derogatory remarks and sonic sound waves of sludge to pull someone from purgatory to hell. All it takes is a few seconds to alter a life to pluck all the feathers out of the wings of an angel. All it takes is someone fucking up your guitar strings to leave you out of tune. I don't have to listen to your white noise. I can listen to whatever the hell I want. I can listen to Billy Talent and not have to worry about being feeling guilty about listening to Katy Perry. All I can hear is this simple phrase, man up, it's those who I've wronged. How I thought you have to be within an infinite loop of toxicity. I am sorry. My younger self was completely in the wrong and out of control. I am ready to take this guitar, play sound waves of love out of amplifier. I was a body dysmorphed. I hated being fat. I had to work out, bury a body that I didn't want. I wanted to plant a tree. I planted weeds instead. I bury myself underneath insults from 13 years of pain and suffering from home, from school, follow me to the mausoleum, on display, all the torture within my coliseum. I did not ask to be pulled out of the grave I dug myself. I was pulled out anyway. There's a zombie apocalypse going on. Love, love resurrects dead bodies, resurrected. Mine was hard to pull someone out of a coffin. It wasn't my time yet. 
Now with zombies roaming around, running everything with walking dead brains. Take this guitar pick. My guitar pick is just as powerful as a shovel. I'm not perfect. But I will do what I can to pull out the people in coffins. We all deserve to have love. We all deserve to live in our own personal heaven. Right. There's that piece right there. And this last one I'm going to do for my book. And it's the second to last poem in there. This last one's called Remember, Remember Me When I Transcend. When I die, I want you to know it is not your fault. It would be my own hands that dig my grave and bury me seven feet under. I won't be taking my riches with me. My soul won't stay stagnant. My poetry will overflow out of these pages. At least I hope. I am the holder of my own keys to my own gas fueled fuckery. With my pedal to the floor of my vehicle, I speed race to fast and furious that one day will kill me. I want a true principle that school never taught me. I need a belief that doesn't kill others. I would love to hold someone close to me. I have accepted that I will either go, event, I will eventually go out as either a martyr or a devil going to be how I'm perceived when the sun touches the earth on that fateful day. I hope I am recognized as a poet. That's all. Yes, Woo! yes, I love it. Oh, Woo! Nick, dude. Killer, so killer. Great, Nick. Yeah, Nick. Also, I like how you said that's all, like you didn't just blow all of our minds. That's <laughs> <laughs> it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's all. That's all, always how I feel. Like a lot of you guys close out like that. Like, yeah, that's it. I'm like, yo, no, come on. That was everything. <laughs> Just uh, trying to stay a little humble, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. You got the the double piece out. Um, yo, so what do you have coming up, man? That you would like to? I know you got stuff coming up, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely have stuff coming up. Well, you can always buy my book, Ad versus Reaction. You can contact me via Facebook, Nick Pay Logos, um, Instagram, The Real Nick P on IG. Um, I have a link tree. Um, I will drop all my info into the chat and everything of how you can get my book and everything like that. Um, I, I also have my, I also had my feature um last Saturday with the Word Is Right, which was, I I don't know how the hell I went through all that like twenty minutes. That was amazing. Like I blacked out. In the that set and it was just wild you should go check that out and go back to that facebook page and go check that out um i'm hosting this front wednesday at um word is right um open mic i will drop all to my it's in my link tree so you can go see that there um and in two weeks i believe that um we're gonna have to build up the church a little bit and um get your preacher uh, me in there to go ahead and go host yeah, absolutely, man. That's going to be the last Monday of the month, November. Great stuff coming up. Coming up. Uh, but yes, thank you, Nick. As always, man, you're, you're such a huge part of this. So thanks for always coming through and, and doing your thing, working your magic. Thank you. Um, yes. So yeah, we're going to get guest host Nick in two weeks. Next week we have, I mean, Kit is coming up later tonight. I'll let him talk about it. We have a, a special kind of thing that we did last year. We're going to try again this year. Um, I'll let him explain it when it's when it's his turn. But let's go ahead and stick around in New Jersey where we have Terry Rose, iFunny's mom, always in the house. Thank you so much for your patience. And how are you doing today? Good. Tired. I, I, I napped before, so I'm awake now. <laughs> Some of the poems were like, woo, jolt me out of my seat. Uh, so this was from um, Finn Bell's workshop about a lost object. I lost your love the day I met you. My brain told me to run away, but my heart said to stay. Some days I wish I ran. The pairing of us was never accepted. The world in general came to reject us. I fought the good fight to keep it together, but my brain has started to sort out what was the matter. My heart got pushed aside and broken, turned to dust. Your selfish ways caused my sanity to rust. Like when too much salty air attacks my metal, disintegrating. 
One day I foresee me putting my foot to the pedal, or maybe the old you, who I once knew, will come back to me, making me feel like I'm already free. And then I wrote this one, this a little on the erotica area, and it was about a shape. The shape of your lips, soft and full, pressing against mine. They have a warmth that thaws my icy bones. I remember your kisses moving around my body, starting on my breathless neck, sending shivers, hair standing on end, alerting my nipples to be on guard for the hard pressing of your organ into my leg, feeling the full shape of you as we begin to move in symphony to the beat of John Coltrane in the background, Juices, flowing hormones, sexual energy in the air. What is stopping us from going further? Underwear. <laughs> Take them off slowly if you want to tease me. Please me. Please me. And I have one I did as a um, same workshop with Finn, um, with a collab with Kit, and it's called lying. The only thing worse than lying is lying poorly. The truth is boring, I always thought so. I tell white lies to spare your feelings, and mine too, I would hate to be hated. Little lies or whoppers, they are all for a purpose, that you look forward to hearing me speak. I don't care if I'm believed, just that I'm heard. Listen to me, God damn it, or else these white lies will turn to charcoal and burn. Thank you. All right. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Everyone got snapping away. You see the little, little yeah. Little, yes. Terry Rose getting down. I love it. Love it. Love the references. Um, and yes, for attending the workshops and getting to do all that. Um, thank you for sharing. Do you have anything coming up you'd like to promote or share? I do. Um, <laughs> just to, I, I don't have it handy. I'll put it in the chat. All right. Sounds good. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Um, and if you want, I can also share that on the, on the YouTube, uh, shout out to people that have been watching the whole, the whole night. Appreciate you guys. Um, all right, looking at the list, let's go and keep going. We're going to stick around East Coast. We got Washington, D.C. up next. Mr. Ed, Poetastic, and as always, get ready for some rhyme fantastic. time. <laughs> Take it away, man. Thank you, bro. Hey, Richie. You're the man with the wonderful plan that put all of us on the man. Who went, sorry. <clears throat> Thank you, Richie. You're the man with the wonderful plan that puts us all the man that was I'm sorry, in these vast lands. I'm sorry for my French, but I'm going through this. My name is Ed Potestical Alien for the Fantastic. Please give me a time for you to join my rhyme for all of you sublime. Okay, here's my chime. I got five jokes and three poems, so you know they're going to rhyme. All right. <clears throat> what did the pumpkins call their rock band? The Autumn Breeze. Why was the beekeeper mad at the bees? They never behaved. What was Dracula's favorite drink? A Bloody Mary. What was what was the zebra's excuse for speeding? He was color, he was colorblind. <laughs> what did the pirate name his parrot? Crackers. <laughs> Why did the farmer heed the cows? Because they kept mooing him. <laughs> all right, I got. All right, um, here's my first poem. This is called Loser King. <clears throat> I remember when I was a kid, I was so small. My mind was more blank than any wall. I remember when I wore goggles, kids teased me saying you didn't look right. The light helps me see the childish fights. I remember kids call me special ed. I kind of make a guess, but God knows why. It was, for, it was for my darling head. I sighed, weeped and cried. I remember reading comics, heroes basking limelight never getting hurt from spite, hits, or lonely nights. I remember being a nerd, hearing the kids laughing like hyenas. My tears rained down, slurred in any slugs. 
I remember when I was bullied, punks beat me black and blue. I was only a kid. I didn't know what to say or what to do. I remember when I didn't know how to read. The books haunted me. I faked it, didn't know how to see. I remember books perplexed me, worldly patterns I didn't understand. The confusion stung like bees, only bright virtue I thirst and demand. I remember getting bad grades. Teachers used to bite my ears off. They didn't know what, whether to scream or to scoff. I remember being slow. My mind was the turtle and everything was the hair. Nobody helped, shared, or cared. I remember being poor, scourging like a little mouse. I watched other rodents scratch nibble and pounce. I remember when I didn't have any friends. The loneliness eats away at me, hoping someone could keep me company, please. I remember my life was so cold, finally getting engulfed in a snowy hurricane, frozen solid from pale hopes, frigid dreams, and bitter pains. I remember having my mom, but never my dad. I used to blame myself if I did something more hurtful or bad. I remember wishing I wasn't born. I just need escape from the misery. Wishing I was a bug or the clear blue sea. I remember my first love. She never knows me, not even my name. I used to run and hide away from the shame. I remember being a little loser. I used to condemn it by rare with pride. Now I know the skies are bluer on the other side. All right. <clears throat> Here's another piece to say the least. This is called I Drink the Sun. I drink the sun to give me courage. I drink the moon, it gives me peace. I drink the stars to give me curiosity. I drink the galaxy to give me zen. I drink the Milky Way, it gives me clarity. I drink the skies, it gives me freedom. I drink the storms, it gives me power. I drink the earth, it gives me memories. I drink the sea, it gives me knowledge. I drink the caves, it gives me energy. I drink the desert, it gives me balance. I drink the mud, it gives me creativity. I drink the concrete, it gives me footing. I drink the jungle, it gives me roots. I drink the volcanoes, it gives me warmth. I drink the glaciers, it gives me breeze. I drink me, it gives me understanding. All right, one more. Okay, and here's the last one. I hope everyone's having fun, but the only the fun just begun. All right, this is called the maybe pit. My mind's foggered in a cracked snow globe with a crying heart spreading out as a crimson soaked robe. I feel like a small fish out of water gasping for air. Does anyone have clear wisdom to share? My body is so heavy, it feels like a bag of lead. I don't know why, why I rest on my soft bed. Maybe I'm lonely. Just, just another so, I mean, sailor with Wilson lost in a clear blue sea. Maybe I'm angry, just tired of getting covered by this annoying, heavy debris. Maybe I'm sad, just feeling nostalgic from the ghostly things that I used to had. Maybe it's fear, just unforeseen monster ready to pounce and put me to tears. Maybe it's doubt. Maybe I just want to ponder on the soft couch. Maybe it's grief. Maybe, I wait, maybe I'm waiting for a summer breeze of blissful relief. Maybe I'm depressed. Maybe someone can remove this rock slide off my chest. Maybe I'm bored. Maybe I need color to paint my white core. Maybe I feel unloved. I'm just air looking for his snowy white dove. Maybe this is confusion. Maybe I just want a sudden change to this boring situation. Maybe I'm hungry. Maybe is that's why I smell steak, pies, or curry. Maybe I'm just cold. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm tired or playing this hand so I fold. Maybe it's writer's block. Maybe I need dynamite to blow away this rock. Maybe there are so many things. I'm alive, which means my days keep on singing. Thank you. <laughs> right on, man. And as always, thank you for, nice, for keep, kicking off with the jokes, man. The humor, all much appreciated. And then the, the heartfelt pieces you know and in, in your own style uh like i said man you're on my speed though and, like, and every time i'm in a rap battle all right just expect a call you're gonna be my lifeline <laughs> i know rap battles don't work that way but <laughs> that's the gesture that i'm trying to say you know uh so ed what do you got coming up man you got any special events you'd like to promote or do you want um of course share your social media sure no problem 
But I gotta say, I love your protest and poor credit, but wordplay. Thank you for thank you for making our days and thank you for making our um thank you for all the things you have to say. Um nothing, I have no features, just here going to open mic to open mic to open mic to shine and to shine and inspire everyone's protestic insight. So if you want to follow me, though, um, if you want to follow me, please feel free. My um, Facebook is Eddie Foreman and my IG is Ed Foreman 92. Remember, if the mic is right, I'll be there to shine my protest insight. And if you send me a request, you can take a guess. I quick, I click on your request. I, I click yes on your request. <laughs> so I hope everyone has a great night and stay blessed. And remember to remember to shout what's inside your chest. <laughs> there you go man thank you you got, you got all the sign offs the sign ins and the sign offs man uh appreciate it thank you ed um yes yeah, so i'm trying to share those links on uh on youtube uh let's see so again shout out to everyone watching on youtube uh, i'm a little behind the links so i'm gonna catch up on that but guys um <laughs> el paso poets what is up hopefully you guys are doing well uh, i do want to promote something this coming week if you guys are free on wednesday uh, come out and support me performing with a live jazz band on, on Cincinnati Street. I'm going to be performing with uh, some of the dudes who, who play jazz there every Wednesday. It's going to be myself, Celia Aguilar, uh, Valentin Sandoval, who is an award-winning poet, um, and uh, Rebel Agnostic, who's a, he's a hip-hop dude who also writes poetry. He's back in town. Um, he had a band called Ribo Flavin for, for many years where he was an MC for that. Uh, come check that out Wednesday, Good Times at 2626. It's a featured show. And so we're just trying to like make poetry more mainstream. And so, cause you know, poetry is not a whole big thing over here. We're trying to get more people used to that, like just performing it in public places. Uh, and jazz isn't either, you know, so we're combining forces to do some poetry and jazz there. Uh, and this is break. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because one, I would like for you to support if you want to go check it out. It's uh, this Wednesday, the 17th, good times at 2626. But breaking news uh, through BWAMS, we're actually going to start a jazz and poetry night once a month on the West side. Uh, EP Draft House 2.0. Uh, we're gonna have uh, a live jazz band set up, and we're gonna invite poets to come up and and try that out. If you've always wanted to try it, performing with live musicians. Um, so I'll be getting more info for you guys on that. But our first show is gonna be Thursday, December 2nd. So make plans for that if you want to come out and, and share some poetry. You can sign up to perform with the band, or you can just sign up to perform by yourself. Um, yeah, so uh, let's go and keep going. Um, we'll stick around in El Paso. Uh, many of you guys already know him. He took over, helped out tonight when I had to step out briefly. Uh, MVP, you know, another one of them. Mr. Monday Night, let's go ahead and welcome Kit Ren to the stage. What's up, Kit? Take it away. Another one. Another one. All right. Uh, hello from uh, my neighbor's house where I'm dog sitting once again and don't have the light situation quite how I like it, but it's my life, man. All right, uh, two of mine and then a cover. Uh, let's see. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. Nobody's dead. I was just drunk on eBay again, and I'm trying to make the best of a bad situation. Also willing to sell complete DVD set of Kolchak the Night Stalker. Same kind of deal. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. I got lost in the store. These are obviously too small. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I guess I just panicked. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. This gift was not funny, Greg. My entire life, people have made fun of my incredibly small feet. I remember very clearly the first such instance when a fourth grade PE teacher said that I looked like a hippopotamus trying to balance itself on two toothpicks. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. What do you mean, why did I write never worn on the tag? Because I had space. Are you going to buy them or not? Is this what you do? You just go to garage sales and you call people liars and they're just... Supposed to put up with it? Oh, yeah? Well, maybe your lady protests too much. Trash dick. For sale. Baby shoes. Never worn. Welcome to the new baby shoe store. 
Our founder, Thurman Barkshat III, started in Tacoma, Washington with a $7,000 loan, a property that used to be a circuit city, and a dream that people could find guaranteed never worn shoes for their babies and infants at a reasonable price. For sale, Meta Short Story Collection. Too niche. Ah, it's a nice little thing. <laughs> and a new one. Uh, and another one. Not really new, but like about four months. Ah. Uh, the eye of the poem is not I, but he often resembles me. The eye of the poem speaks in my diction and preoccupies himself with my concerns. I do not know if this makes him my employee or my son, or maybe a plant sprouted from a trimming. When they complain about their circumstances, I do not know if they do so with the helpless wail of a skinned knee or the veiled threat of unionization. When they fail in front of a live audience, sometimes, I am vengeful and protective like a mother bear. Other times I am disappointed and grim and inform them that they have been reassigned. In a couple cases, let go altogether. A lovelorn eye has requested a meeting with me. He has a list of demands. He's much more handsome than me, which makes his lovelornness inexplicable and cruel and artistically interesting. His first demand is just the word unfair in all capital letters. He is tired of being the Greek on the urn Keats saw, chasing and not catching, drinking but never drunk. He knows that I have no other poems in this emotional, in this emotional register. This is also unfair. This is too much pressure. Anyway, he thought I hated Keats. I, I love Keats. I don't know where he got that. Wordsworth I don't like. He wants a better ending. Poems never end, I say. He shrieks in frustration. Not another damn koan. I just want some fucking say in the things that I'm supposed to have done. It sounds reasonable, but there are plenty of actual people with the same complaint. This is supposed to be about them in the end, right? Not us. A poem isn't a way around or out of life. I lecture the lovelorn one. I put a fatherly hand on his shoulder. He doesn't like it, but he's too weak to shake it off. It has to be weathered, just like everything else. I shove him towards the door, and he leaves as miserable as he's ever looked. And I made him to be miserable. The eyes of my poems are talking amongst themselves. They are restless and stubborn. They are not staying within their lines and themes. They are comparing salaries. I do not know if they are my employees or my children, but they are definitely not plants. And both fathers and bosses know the revolution always comes. And for the cover, um, I was going back and forth most of the night, but I ended up settling on this one. This is Making Peace by Denise Liebertoff. A voice from the dark called out, the poets must give us imagination of peace to oust the intense, familiar imagination of disaster. Peace, not only the absence of war, but peace, like a poem, is not there ahead of itself, can't be imagined before it is made, can't be known except in the words of its making, grammar of justice, syntax of mutual aid, a feeling towards it, dimly sensing a rhythm, is all we have until we begin to utter its metaphors, learning them as we speak a line of peace might appear if we restructured the sentence our lives are making, revoked its reaffirmation of profit and power, questioned our needs, allowed long pauses, 
a cadence of peace might balance its weight on that different fulcrum. Peace, a presence, an energy field more intense than war, might pulse then, stanza by stanza, into the world, each act of living one of its words, each word a vibration of light, facets of the forming crystal. There you go. That's Ooh. awesome, man. Yeah, that's a that's a way to end your piece. You know, you Ooh. just did, again. I've performed alchemy. <laughs> that's the way I see it. Um, so, Kit, do you want to tell us more about uh, obviously next Monday and what you had in plan, and of course other things that you'd like to to give a yes. shout out to? Uh, I will lead with that because I forgot my sign, so I can't do the rest in a in a neat manner. Uh, but yes, next week I will be your host. It will be a grand time, and I want us to have a potluck. You, you've seen what I, I do over the weeks and months with the cover poems where I take other people. I want all of us to cover each other. I'm going to reach out to a couple of you, and I want all of you to reach out to each other, and we can all read each other's poems and put us in this whole weird headspace. A family event, just like Thanksgiving is. <laughs> so, and as for the other stuff, Instagram at Kit Run Away, Twitter at Kit Talk Sports. Um, at my old college alt week, week, the Denton night, I have a column where I talk about old football games because they'll just let me do anything, I guess. Um, let's see. You can find me on Facebook easy enough. Uh, and you can find me here every Monday and I'll give it back to you, Richie. All right, man. Appreciate it. Uh, as as I mentioned before, Kit has 100% attendance at these. So, and of course has stepped up a lot appreciate you man uh the poetic potluck yeah we did this last year and it was it was super interesting to hear other people read your pieces and their styles and and everything so it's it's an interesting act uh, um yeah check it out if you guys are interested like send each other messages hit each other up because uh, there's so many amazing poems uh it's just it's an interesting way to show love to the other poet um all right thank you kit let's go ahead and keep going we're gonna go ahead and go to the west coast for our next two performers uh we do maybe we do if anyone wants to hit up an open spot um we have at least one or two and as always we do close out with dan so dan if you can hear me right now make sure you're finishing up so we don't do the whole hold up wait 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 i'm not ready start getting ready all right there's two more people possibly more and then you okay uh so we're gonna go to the west coast long beach where we have Abraham Kamani joining us. What is up, Abraham? How you doing, man? How how was the, good, the show you were watching? <laughs> oh, I watch. You know, I'm a big fan of crime shows. Have been since I was a kid. So I was watching Forensic Files earlier. So my bad. You know, when I was on mic trying to cheer the people on and having the TV on, man. You know, so all good, man. Go ahead and uh, uh, go and take it away. Yeah, man. So I just want to give my respects to everybody who has performed here all you guys were dope and i try to learn at least one thing from each piece that i hear on zoom uh so i'm gonna share three three pieces with you guys and this should be done in seven minutes uh this first one is like a post veterans day piece in which i try to expand on the concept of veteran to also talk about people who fight for the liberation of people of color black people, brown people, et cetera, et cetera. You know, not just looking at veterans as those who served in the actual armed forces. This one is called Mr. Genocide. Mr. Genocide, how can a war be civil on the battlefield when black soldiers are dying for causes not yet achieved? America's room aborts freedom liberty and justice for all human beings when black lives are taken off life support. After being placed under cardiac arrest by law enforcers for pursuing happiness inside of their home sweet homes. I ask the questions, are graveyards the new prisons burying black bones six feet under for life in solitary confinement? Why does it take death to mercilessly pull plugs for white folks to see themselves suffocate in hate, gasping out, they too can't breathe, 
the poisonous air of racism threatening their humanity by silencing their voices with the cloth of privilege. Will America ever end this civil war, conquer division, while her civilization has a military force willing to unite people across racial lines to break the shackles of slavery wrapped around both the predator and prey? Will she perish going down a history and utter failure who denied her citizens the human right to be free? That's that first set, first one. This one was from a prompt yesterday by the LA Port Society. Uh, it was called Exhausted. So I flipped this one to a, another social justice piece called Exhausted While Black. I am exhausted from living as a slave, living in dire fear, living under the roof of racist domestic terrorists of European descent, beating me with whips and batons, shooting me with their guns. I am exhausted from running for my life, running out of breath, running to find safety in the arms of freedom in a country that pride itself on being the land of the free and the home of the brave. I am exhausted from looking over both shoulders, looking at danger follow me, looking back to see how close am I to being recaptured, am I to being re-enslaved in America's unforgiving plantations subjected to cruel and unusual punishment. I am exhausted from reaching up to the sky reaching with all my might, reaching out to almighty God to take me out of my misery to his promised land of liberty, a utopia I heard about named heaven for an eternal escape from this evil earth. I am exhausted from shedding ounces of blood, shedding drips of sweat, shedding drops of tears lost while fighting for black lives, lost everywhere on American soil, but I refuse to give up on life and die from being exhausted while black. That's the second one. And this last one, I missed Paul Conquesa's workshop earlier on uh, mindful masculinity, but I wrote a piece called Gentle Men. Gentlemen, Explain to me what the fuck does it mean to be gentle men in a toxically masculine society that frowns on gentlemen for being gentle men. These two words compounded into one seem to have polar opposite meanings, like gentle is soft, but men are hard. Like gentle is weak, but men are strong. Like gentle is fragile, but men are unbreakable. This is both real and bullshit at the same time. Let me take a minute to explain. Gentlemen do have soft ass hearts and hard ass penises at the same time. Gentlemen do have weak ass bodies and strong ass minds at the same time. Gentlemen do have fragile ass feelings and unbreakable ass spirits at the same time. Now, gentlemen, explain to me what the fuck does it mean to be gentle men in a toxically masculine society that frowns on gentlemen for being gentle men? Because these two words compounded into one still seem to have polar opposite meanings, like gentle is slow, but men are fast. Like gentle is passive, but men are aggressive. Like gentle is sensitive, but men are insensitive. Well, this too is real, is both real and bullshit at the same time. Please let me take one more minute to explain. Gentlemen are slow to open a woman's legs but are fast to open doors for a woman at the same time. Gentlemen are passive in accepting love and commitment, but are aggressive in rejecting lust and infidelity at the same time. 
gentlemen are sensitive enough to cry when betrayed, but are insensitive enough to kill betrayal at the same time. This concludes my explanation of the definition of a true gentleman. Gentlemen, it is now your turn to explain to me what the fuck does it mean to be gentle men in a toxic in a toxically masculine society that frowns on gentlemen for being gentle men. Because these two words compounded into one still seem to have polar opposite meanings to gentlemen who remain hungover from drinking too many cum shots of toxic masculinity. That's it. All right, man. Yes, yes. Thank you, Abraham. <laughs> Rocking it, man. Uh, so do you got anything you'd like to promote or at least your social media so we can follow your, your poetic journey? Uh, actually, I just uh, submitted three poems for uh, the L.A. Poet Society. They're doing an anthology. It's like a social justice anthology, which you have to reimagine living in a world without white supremacy, anti-blackness, imperialism, and et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I was due today, actually. So I submitted my three pieces yesterday and hopefully one, if not all three of them, get accepted into that anthology. Otherwise, you know, I'm still building up on my collection as always, and I'm still posting pieces on my Instagram, The Righteous Poet, spelled W-R-I-T-E-O-U-S. And I'm going on as many open mics as I possibly have the time to go on and spit these pieces right on man yes thank you so much uh, thanks for coming on man as always glad to have you here and uh if you guys are watching on youtube and are not following them go do that right just poet all right, thank, all stuff. thank you man um all right so we're gonna go from long beach to la and we're gonna go ahead and bring up deso somok i see him already there on his guitar the blurry background uh that's a new one that's new uh what's up how you doing man how's your day going Oh, I got my third booster shot, and I'm kind of, kind of spacing. <laughs> so. All right, man. It, it's gonna make uh, the tunes more psychedelic. Uh, yeah. Anyway, go ahead and take it away. All right, I'm gonna do. Uh, I was thinking of my friend, our friend, who is uh, being diagnosed right now, Kemlin. So I was thinking of this piece for her by Chavela Vargas, uh, "Las Simple Cosas," the simple things. se despide incesiblemente de pequeñas cosas lo mismo que un árbol que en el tiempo de otoño se queda sin hoja Al fin la tristeza es la muerte lenta de la simple cosa. Estas cosas simples que quedan dolientes. Siempre a los viejos sitios donde amo la vida y entonces compré.
aprende cómo están ausentes las cosas queridas. Por eso, muchacha, no partas ahora soñando el regreso que el amor es simple y las cosas simples las devora el tiempo demórate aquí a la luz mayor de este mediodía donde encontrarás el pan al sol la mesa tendida por eso muchacha no partas ahora soñando el regreso el amor Las devora el tiempo. Vuelve siempre a los viejos sitios donde amo la vida. Oh man, that was amazing. That was that was solid. Permission to freak out. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> so, this says, "Uno se despide incesablemente de pequeñas cosas. One says goodbye incessantly to small things. The same as a tree when fall, it one is left without leaves. At the end, the sadness." is the death the, the slow death of simple things those simple things that remain that hurt in the heart uno vuelve siempre one always returns to old places where one loved life y entonces comprende one understands why you know one understands the absence of these small things that one loves she says girl please don't leave don't don't return thinking that that the love for small things is uh las cosas simples is very simple because time devours these things and that's pretty much the um the theme of the of the songs uh, Chabela, uh, you guys know who Chabela Vargas was, right? She's a very famous uh, uh, singer who was born in Costa Rica. And when she was asked 
where she was born, she says she was a Mexican. She says, but you're not a Mexican. You were born in Costa Rica. She goes, a Mexican doesn't need permission to to be to be born wherever they want. No pide permiso donde nacer. So that was her. She had she was gutsy. And then somebody, uh, I think Terry had a poem about small things, and it made me think about this piece. I'm gonna. I, can I give you another piece, Richie? Yeah, totally. All right. This piece is uh, Sembrando Flores. It's uh, by Los Cojolites, um, a Wapango group out of, I believe, Jalapa, in the state of Hidalgo. saliera al campo a buscar amores mi madre me dijo que sembrara flores que saliera al campo a buscar amores mi madre me dijo que sembrar a flores que salir al campo a buscar amores mi madre me dijo que sembrar a flores que salir al campo a buscar amores
All right, orale. All right, man. Ted is getting down. Nathaniel's like, never seen this side of you, man. <laughs> no, he's freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dope, man. Thanks for sharing those. Um, do you have anything coming up that you'd like to promote? Well, uh, as you saw, I got, uh, I'm actually international now. I'm international poet. Officially, I'm born into internationality. I can sing the international song now, I guess. Is that correct, Kit? So I got a piece published in, in British Columbia and Canada. So that under macrocosm. And it's really interesting. It's speculative fiction, which is a, a highly underrepresented area where we are not represented. So you remember my uh, my Canticle for the Land? That one was accepted for that. So I'm really happy with that. Folks can follow me on Instagram under Gashas 2019. So I am international now. <laughs> that's amazing congratulations thank you guys. Um, yeah thank you yeah and definitely if you're not check out pandemic poets group on on facebook and uh post your events workshops all that stuff sure. going on thank you all right so we're gonna go from la to back to eptx chucolandia the land of chuco town where uh we've got <clears throat> dan the man our resident dan the man everyone has one <laughs> These are Dan the Man, um, Daniel the Manual. Uh, yo, what's up, Dan? Are you ready? Hopefully. Okay, cool. Also, shout out to everyone who has performed tonight uh, from people who have returned to the first time reading here. Um, <clears throat> you guys, like I said, you guys are always welcome. Uh, Dan, Dan, Dan. What's up? Sorry. Oh. What happened? Where the hell is Patty? I thought she was gonna. I thought she was up next. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know how to tell you this. Okay, let me. Uh, well, I'm gonna turn my camera around. Let me um, show you. Um, hang on. All right, give me one second. There we go. There it is. Just one second. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to share this one. All right. Here it is. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. And, uh, okay, that's the first episode. Uh, okay, first, second, th okay, that's, yeah, that's the anniversary. That's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. Yeah, <laughs> I <right>, hold up. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 back. This is it, my 700th episode last year. And speaking of that, we'll have a long list of shout outs for my, for my, well, last, this was last year saying for my 700th episode this time, be advised, we'll have a long, long list of shout outs and some, some of it will be featured once again, some of it will be added and um, you guys are going to like this one. Okay. Now. <clears throat> I okay, and now I prepared something. It is called 800. <clears throat> 800. The episodes I counted after seven years from the start of August 25th, 2014. Yet another breakthrough is near, yet again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And again. Uh, <laughs> okay. Going through regular blogs, special editions, scenes of my poetry slams, interviews, birthday tributes, all the above, going to 800. Yep. Last year was lucky, number 700. <laughs> yeah, 700. I'm not talking about being safe from COVID. Um, I'm talking about lucky number seven last year, you know, my milestones, my blogs. Now, this year, I'm talking about 800. That's right. Never fear. Yet another milestone is near. Well, 
How lucky was that at? <laughs> How lucky was that? And well, <laughs> just like uh, just like according to uh, Tim Curry, like you see uh, um, the the Rocky Horror Picture Show is say, "Well, you're caught in a flat." Well. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like this part. I'm just a sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that song. That's nice. Okay. All right. Back to, um, okay, back to 800. How lucky was that? Well, how about that? <laughs> oh, that's a fact. <laughs> you know, you're caught. And a plot. Yeah. Well, what 800 counts? It's the numbers that count, the episodes that mount. You don't count miles, you don't count days, you not even a volume, height, or hours, especially words or essays or poetries or stories or artwork or really or people or really something else. It's just numbers that count, the episodes that mount. That's right. I count episodes. Yep. The milestone takes time. Yeah. Uh, every episode, one step at a time. Every numbers count. Every episodes count. Ordered in line. Count anniversaries. Yeah, you know what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times 100. <laughs> That's right. Or like 200 times four. Or 400 times two. Reminds me of, you know, like an 800 number, like like 1-800-T-A-L-L-A-T-T, or 1-800-A-B-C-D-E-F-G, or 1-800-8675309. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Or kind of, or some of the negative crap, like 1-800-KISS-MY-ASS. <laughs> Or, or something like one eight hundred e uh something that rhymes with it. Uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, I guess you already saw that. <sighs> yeah, because I saw that. I saw that bumper in L.A. <laughs> uh, that was stupid. <laughs> or something like a song from Logic featuring Khalid and Alyssa Cotta, like one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five. Yeah, that's the song from Logic. Yeah, 800 Live. He, Khalid, you may take the lead. <laughs> or like something like a dice, hard eight, or night hunt. Like a dice roll in the game, uh, something to hold of craps where, where both dice land a four. Huh. Funny like fate stay night so late. Funny after 800 straight. Well, I still need a date. <laughs> okay, I came a long way. Why the hell I keep saying that? Huh. And, well, that will be the day. What can I say? How about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that what eight, what comes, what counts 800? Just numbers that count and the episodes that mount. Last year was lucky number 700. This year gonna sound like a number, a phone number, 800. Another milestone ahead, no dead ends, more episodes, just full speed ahead. Or like listening to the song, Touch of Grey, like uh, it's a milestone state of play. Oh, speaking of Touch of Grey, song by the, the Grateful Dead. <laughs> I like that song. <laughs> What counts 800? Just the numbers that count the episode that mounts. 800th episode came a long way. Why the hell do I keep saying that? Well, how about that? <laughs> uh, speaking of the Grateful Dead, play me a song, Touch of Grey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that is it, 800. <sighs> what do y'all think? Congrats, man. Thank you very much. Okay, well, my 800th episode could be sometime this week, so I'll keep you guys posted, but my next blog already got 798, so I'm just two blocks away. I'm just gonna, I'm just doing this one as a uh, 799 for the scenes of my poetry slam, and after that, 800 episodes. 
And be aware, we got a long list of shout outs once again. And also I will feature, one sec. Yet another, another Patreon gift from the GFM band. Yeah, sorry, my address is there. Hmm. Yeah, the GFM band. Hmm. I'll show you. Yep, the GFM band. The GFM band. <laughs> yep, another, yeah, it'll be another skit. Also, I will review. Also, I will review the City Magazine. Hey, look, it's R Ricky Martin. Shake a bum bum, take a bum bum, take a bum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yep. Well, the City Magazine's back since last Thursday. <laughs> well, how about that? <laughs> Well, <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Uh, guys, don't miss my 800th episode, Dan the Man's Weekly. It'll be sometime this week. All right. And I uh, hope I will be. I hope I'll be there Thursday at the Black Sheep at the at the Old Sheep Old Sheep Dog Brewery in the Central. So, guys, I will. I will promote. I will. I'm hoping to promote my 800th episode, but I think I should be done around then, or maybe it should be out. Um, I'll keep you guys posted. Okay, guys. All right, guys. Thank you very much. You guys have a great night. I'll see you next Monday. Be aware of my 800th episode. Yet another milestone sometime this week. I'll keep you guys posted. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Richie. Back to you. Cool. Click. Peace. Oh. Yo. Yeah. All right, cool. <clears throat> that's a yeah that's a pretty hefty episode of city magazine and uh congrats on 800 mm -hmm. dan the man episodes dan the man's yeah. weekly it's a lot it's a lot of them um <clears throat> all right guys thanks for tuning Thank in you. for another monday night here at staying home open mic presented by bar wait, bar mic series patty? we made it wait what where's patty hey man <laughs> why what is it Patty is she, doing great. I thought she was going to go <clears throat> on. What happened? No, no, not today. It's okay. Next time. Next time, not okay? That's all right. Yeah, I already gave her a shout. You weren't paying attention, man. That's why the other thing I was, I mentioned it earlier. Um, all right, but uh, back to the conclusion. Uh, thank you to everyone who read today. As always, uh, much love. This is one of your homes where you guys can share your work, have a little bit of space to do it. Um, this is, of course, on YouTube, so definitely check it out. If you watch it, um, you know, I hate to say it, but and it's like so cliche, but like the whole algorithm thing, you know, if you guys do like the video and and share it with people, leave comments, I think it, it pushes it so more people can see it, and I think that's better for all of us, right? So <clears throat> uh, my name is Rich, signing out for tonight, for this week. We'll be back next week with Kit Ren as guest host super excited about that and then two weeks nick paleologos as guest host um love it thank you guys 